Welcome back, everybody, to the Mountain Dew League Global Finals Grand Final. We've got Penta, we've got Big. My name is Dan Gaskin, and I've got Scrawny and Bok on the desk with me for the final. Quite fitting having you guys here because you started off with me today as well. Such an exciting match that we have coming up, but slightly unpredictable, I think. It's not exactly what we expected, is it? Yeah, I mean, everyone was anticipating, uh, you know, a big versus a godsend grand finals. So we, we kind of had a great game right there that could have been our grand finals. Uh, it was a fantastic back and forth fight, but instead Penta really surprised a lot of people, myself included. I did yeah. not think that Penta was going to go through the groups the way that they did. I thought they'd make it out, but I didn't think they'd be the number one seed. Uh, but they really surprised a lot of people, and then they didn't surprise so many people when they 2 would Splice to get here. So now you're looking at this game, and it's a lot harder to predict what's going to happen next. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just the safe to say that what our grand finals is is not what we expected, right? We expected it earlier on in the tournament. So all of a sudden, it is hard to kind of consider what's going to happen because there has been ups and downs for both teams. We've seen Godsent, or not Godsent, rather, Big, have a bit of a struggle versus Ghost at the beginning of the tournament. Like, it's not as though they got here in a flawless fashion, as opposed to Penta, who was yeah. a little more convincing. So despite Big now arguably being the favorite, having taken down the Godsent, um, Penta were an unknown entity to a certain degree, and now we know that they're here to play. I mean, Penta haven't dropped a map uh, no. so far this Correct. tournament. Big have dropped one. It was overpass. It was against uh, Godsen. But this is a rematch, uh, another rematch, another grudge match uh, from the ESCA playoffs. I mean, uh, Penta actually took down Big 2-1. to one. Uh, No, sorry, Big took down Penta 2-1 to one in those playoffs to move on and qualify for this tournament today. So a lot on the line for, for both of these teams. Do you think there's any sort of rivalry here? coming from that matchup at all? Oh, I'd say absolutely. I think Penta's out for blood because that was their shot at making it to the ESL Pro League. And ultimately, Big got shut down by Godsent, who did make it to the ESL Pro League. So they've already gotten their revenge. Now it's Penta who's going for the jugular. Uh, they want to cut Big out of this tournament. 
walk away with the biggest check possible. Trust me, I've held it. It's pretty big. And, and they're going to be going home happy. And not only that, they're going to be moving with that momentum into the relegation matches, which they'll be playing out, I believe, later this week. Yep, and absolutely. Who are the players that need to be stepping up for, for this game? Then we, we've, sp we've highlighted several players from game to game throughout this whole tournament. But is there anyone in particular you think needs to show up in this grand final if there's going to be a victory for either side? I mean, I think, <coughs> excuse me, Sonny is a key component of the Penta Forces. Uh, he's generally up there with the kills and, and whatnot, and he has been through the tournament as well. He's had games where he very much did carry. Uh, Innocent's been, been charging forward for Penta as well, which is nice because during the regular season, he was their hardest hitting player. So he's come to show up, and even Zen, in important matches, has also been putting up frags. So there, there's, I think, a key component within Penta is that everybody can play to a certain level. So I wouldn't necessarily put an emphasis on one individual, but rather Penta needs to play as has they have been, which is with everybody performing. Yeah, I'd say so as well. I, you know, I'm looking at Penta, and I think they're the most even across the board with the way the roster's been performing. Even when you had games where, like, player A does something good, like, let's say Zen plays really well, and, you know, you have someone like, uh, like Sunny falling by the wayside. Zen's playing great. Sunny's not playing great. There's guys who are, like, picking up the slack to make up for it, and then in the next map, those roles get reversed, and the other guy might struggle. It's kind of like they fall back into comfortable positions on the map. So, like, the maps really dictate who's going to be your top performer more than just, like, big, where your top performer is going to be Tapson. There is no questioning <laughs> it. Tapson will be your best player, and the only person who's really given him a fair fight for it in the regular season, it was Nex, and then on land, it's been Keeve, who's had his bumps and bruises as well. And certainly the last game as well, Nex uh, really showed up. There was a few key rounds where he got 3Ks, 4Ks. He really clutched it up. And I don't know if you heard the statistic from Harry as well in the previous segment. He said uh, that apart from Tempson, the four other players from Godsent were just below him as the top fraggers across the series. And everyone else was just below those Godsent players. So it's crazy that he is lifting his team that much. I yeah. if, if he underperforms... Is that just a massive loss? Does that just mean they're not going to be able to get through this final whatsoever? If Tabson underperforms, then I don't know where the hard carry comes from. Because like Bach was just saying, with Penta, you have a more kind of plateaued um, kill count across the five players. Tabson needs to be up that high because he has certain players on his team who don't regularly put up numbers. Now, if he has an off game and somebody else is able to step up into his shoes, great, they'll still be fine. They are all talented guys. Um, but, but Tabson, as Bach was saying, is just so consistently up there that I don't really know a big where Tabson's not the top fra fragger. Yeah, I mean, if it's going to happen, it's probably going to be Nex. And if it's not him, it's Keeve. Those are the two that I look at to take that position. Because Gabi, being the in-game leader, he, he's not really been known for like coming out and putting up big numbers. He's a smart player like Pronax is. We saw like impact versus total. Uh, I'd say the kills he's getting are important, but they don't necessarily tally up as high as, say, Tabson's do. But uh, you know, I, if Tabson doesn't show up, I mean, we might see what we saw from Splice early on when Roka didn't show up. Just a disappointing performance for the team because that guy who's been piggybacking your whole team for the entire tournament, the whole season even, is now suddenly disappearing and gone. And it doesn't matter how well the, your other players play, like we saw with Splice when Semphis was stepping up and we saw Drone stepping up. Without that dynamic force of that one player who's been the X Factor all season long, they're in a position they can't get out of. I certainly, you, you touched on Godby as well. I, I think, uh, Godby, sorry, I think he's had some unnecessary criticism. I think as an in-game leader, there's a lot of responsibility and someone has to be behind all those calls. So uh, I'm expecting big things from him. But I believe down on the stage, Mr. Matt Andrews has an interview with a player from either team. So Mr. Matt Andrews, over to you. Mr. Dan Gaskin, thank you so much. <laughs> player and coach, actually, we've got Alex, coach for big, and Sen here. Clutch Master Sen, Clutch Meister Sen. We were just chatting about it just now, and uh, Alex was going, yeah, we know, remember that 1v3, 6 HP clutch that you did? Sen goes, 4 HP. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take more than individual performances to beat Big, though. Yeah, actually, we have to show our best now, as far as we have come come to this far. So we want to like, win this, but we have to give it all. It matters to you that you win this. It's your first LAN. You've got something to prove? Um, yeah, it's our first LAN together, like, we have played together now two months, had a boot camp, had, like, practice, and we are in the final. And that's already big, but now we have to really face the big. There it is. Yeah, I can see okay. this name going to give us endless, <laughs> endless fun. Uh, you guys, though, as I was saying just now to your man, um, 
that was the final, really, no disrespect to Penta, but a lot of people predicted, certainly on paper, perhaps, that it would be a big godsend final. Having got that out of the way, you must be feeling really good about this, but not underestimating your opponents. Um, yeah, that, that's that's correct. I mean, we're feeling really good after after we beat us for EPL, what was um, very very important. Um, but we felt even back then we felt we could have beat them because we had a really bad day. And uh, coming here, it was on, on land. Everything like changes here again. But they played really insane good. Overpass was super hard hard for us. But uh, in the end, uh, Tabson showed up. The team showed up. Gob called really insane again, and uh, we won. You're right, Tabson, Gob Pro, and all the rest of your guys as well. Again, we just said, you know, it's going to take more than individual efforts to do this. There were some moments in that last one when uh, Tabson certainly was holding it all together, but you were like 14-9 down on your first map. You went seven rounds and won it 16-14. So your guys are good when their backs are to the wall. Mm, yeah, I mean, um, all the players are like playing a long time now, and I saw so much routine in that, and uh, we saw it like in all the other matches that we can come back. It doesn't matter how far we're behind. And even the, the 14 round like hit, we, like everybody like, went cool, nobody really like panicked, and that's how we won cash. Of course, you guys have played each other loads of times. There's a lot of history between these, and it's gone both ways. And you scrim, and you practice. Is that hard then when it's competitive, when it matters? This is the Mountain Dew League Global Finals. There's $18,000 to the winner. Is it hard competing like this against people you know well and are friends with? I don't know. Now we'll see. <laughs> Fair answer. Your guys obviously taking this whole thing very seriously, but how will it feel playing up against them? Um, I mean, it uh, it feels great. I mean, we knew that it, it would be like if everything like goes uh, right, it would be Panther or Godson, and we knew that Panther can beat Godson too because um, we recently they had really good results, and everybody knows that they're like the, a, a team that you have to look out for, and, and even for us. And we are just like really prepared. We we like the maps that we chose, and we will see what happens. Let's do it. Best of three final to see who's going to be the champion in the Mountain Dew League Global Finals. Big against Penta, a handshake between our guys. What a contest we've got. We've already had such amazing semi-finals today. And let's not forget, we had 10 incredible best of ones yesterday. Overtimes, triple overtimes. We've had it all this weekend. That last semi-final was the final many people predicted. That was incredible. What are we going to get from Big versus Penta? Dan Gaskin and our analyst before we go to Machine and Moses to cast it. This can be an incredible final. Yes, it can be, and we hope it's going to be an incredible final. Hopefully it goes all the way here, because if it is a blowout, if it is just a 2-0, it will be somewhat anticlimactic. But let's get into the vetoes then. I, I've got my my little wisdom sheet. Any any little predictions before? I know you, you like your little veto predictions, don't I you? I have Bob? thrown that game out the oh, window. Oh, come on. It was because a fun game. Because teams have... Tr like. Like, we saw teams come into this event that perma-veto the same map every single time, regardless of who they're playing, that picked the map all of a sudden. I <laughs> would like to see Cash. Now, I don't know if it's going to be a Penta pick or if it's going to be a big pick, uh, but having watched Big play it earlier and knowing Penta's kind of, you know, map pool, I would say that that would be a map that should give us an awesome series. All right, well, Penta ban Nuke and Big ban Overpass. Like, you... Did you see that? No. That was special. I, I didn't see the sheet, but I'm just thinking of the previous matches and I'm going, it's going to be it's overpass. Be a okay, because if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm big coming into this, you just watched us play overpass and That's you saw sure. all of our weaknesses yeah. and you saw some of our players completely forget how to play 100%. the game on overpass. So just if anything, it. it's like we're, not, we're never playing that map -uh. ever Straight again. Out. It's gone. Just to pretend that Straight map doesn't up. exist. Can't wait till they remake it. Um, uh, the picks then, Cash and Inferno. So Cash, a pick from Penta and Inferno, the pick for big. And then Train taken away from Penta, Cobble taken away from Big, leaving us with Mirage, Mirage as well. And I'm looking back at the ESEA semi-final playoffs. Uh, it was Inferno first, and actually Penta took down Big 16 to 8 on that one. And we did see Cash as well. Big took down Penta 16 to 11. So interesting matchups. Any thoughts with the maps in play? I mean, the maps do make sense. We've seen good play from these teams on, on the maps that were picked. The remaining map will be the interesting one. I believe you said it's Mirage is the, the third and random decider map. Funnily enough, they also played that in the semifinals as well. I was going to well. say, yeah. the this is the exact same, map pool. The same yeah. map pool. So it's it's basically just a repeat of that performance. And I, I would say, if anything, Penta's probably a little bit happy because they kept that game close then, and they've been playing better on land than they were playing online. In my opinion, they're the best team across the board here that's been playing on land, the most consistent, the ones that haven't had issues closing out games like everyone else has. They got a lead and they held on to it, whereas every other team at this event, they would get a lead and then it would slowly fall away, and then we'd end up in triple overtime at like, you know, two o'clock in the morning. 
One one of the differences with this series as opposed to the one that we saw during the online playoffs is, if I'm not mistaken, the picks were inversed. The today, the teams have chosen what the other team first chose. Because again, I was alluding earlier to Penta's ability to play Inferno. It's incredibly good. Um, it's it's just. I didn't really see it so much earlier in that other series. They didn't really go to all of their executions because I know they have more than that. I've seen it myself. Um, and I'd love to see them really have that kind of a showing to really show us the depth of their playbook when it comes to that map. I mean, yeah, both so teams have yet to lose any of these maps to mm. this, uh, over this weekend. So they're all very confident, that's for sure. Who picked Inferno? Inferno was picked by Big. Big. That's what I thought. So. I think what you have going there is a team that's played this other team on Inferno before, so they know what to expect, and then they've watched Penta struggle against Splice, a team that, you know, someone like G Big might g not give much respect at a stage like this. So they're saying, okay, if they struggled against Splice, and we have basically two players, Tabson and Roka, who do similar things, and Tabson's been able to do it without a problem all tournament long, then that would be the X factor to push us over on that map. So we'll feel confident taking that map, knowing that we've already seen what it is they're going to do more than once, and also earlier today. So already mind games coming into into play then. But how much of that semi-final in the ESDA playoffs will play on the minds of Penta, knowing that they lost two one on these three maps? Can they just completely forget that and just think, actually, we're on land now. This is a completely different tournament. We don't need to worry about that. Or are there any factors they can remember from those playoff semifinals that might help them in these games? I mean, Mirage was incredibly close when it was on the online series, right? And I think one thing that kind of sets precedent to Penta's um, ability to play Inferno is the is the score that they won it on. It was very convincing, 16-8 if I'm not mistaken. So it, it was just such a one-sided affair and Big seemed so lost that I feel as though Penta would be feeling good here because that was a very close series that they started off in a convincing fashion. Sure, you're on land now, but it's the exact same team, it's the exact same map pool. It's time to really see who is the best. Yeah, you know, right, right now if you're Penta, all you're focusing on is the fact that you've been the most consistent land performer. And you can't get yourself into that trap of, well, no one thought we would make it this far. Because then you start thinking a little bit differently about your play style and your, your strengths. But we talked about it early on in the tournament, how the pressure was really on teams like Big and Godsend to come out here and prove something. To show, like, as much as we've been able to make a, a small splash in the European scene, if we were to lose these events, everyone forgets about that small splash and all that's left is the tiny ripple, the echo of that what we once did. So if anything... The pressure is more on big here than Penta. Penta's shown up multiple times at this event, and I think right now they're feeling loose, whereas big might be a little bit stressed and concerned about this match. Uh, you're completely right. Penta have shown up. They've been consistent. They've never really looked off, whereas we think of big and how they've been completely polar opposite to that. I mean, look at their last Inferno game against Ghost. 14-2 up, almost throw it away, win 16-13. Penta are going to be lapping that up. They're saying, okay, we're playing Inferno. We beat them before. They don't look particularly strong. And their mentality is not there. If we can get in their heads, this should be a comfortable one. Is that going to be a strategy for Penta? Do you think they're going to try and get loud and try and be proud and get in the heads of, of Big here? Well, I think if you're Penta right now, you're saying, thanks, Big, for picking Inferno. We're so glad that you picked that map because it basically gives them a free pick of whatever else they want. So, you know, I think if you're Penta... Inferno is your key to victory, and I think that it is a victory for Penta. Just looking at that map and the way that Penta plays compared to the way that Big played, it's a very confusing pick from Big. Yeah. It's, it is like they're trying to get into their heads, but I think they got in their own instead. But map number one is going to be Cash. Now, any quick predictions that how you think that one's going to go down? Uh, you know, I, I know you watched these guys play in the semifinals. I would give a, an edge to Big. Uh, with the way that we have the individual players stepping up, it's a map where like Tapskin can take over yet again, just like he's done all tournament long. Mm -hmm. So I would give a slight edge to Big. I would mirror that opinion. You'd mirror that? You yep. think it's going to go that way as well? Uh, absolutely. I mean, they, they, they literally are have the ability to come back versus Godsent on a map like that. And while Penta do still have some edges in the sense that they play a great cash, uh, and they play it, I think, in a bit more a bit more explosive and a little looser than what we saw with Godsent. I don't think we're going to see Penta really kind of give up on the uh, rapid aggression peaks. Like, we saw... We saw Godsent going for the A main flashbangs. We saw them pushing into B main from time to time as well. And, and I don't think Penta will stop that. Um, so... Again, I think as though, I think here it is Inferno that's going to be the key to success because I highly doubt this now ends with a 2-0 having big playing Inferno versus Penta. And does momentum play a part of it then? If, uh, say, it goes either way for this cash game, 
going into game two. If they've got a win there, is the mentality going to help them going into the second? I, th I think if you're Penta and you lose that first map, as long as you keep it close, you're fine. Mm -hmm. And it's about coming out swinging on the second. So if, if anything, if Penta has a big victory on Inferno, which I'm sort of predicting that it's going to be a little bit more lopsided for them, that then sort of spirals over into that third map where we could see things kind of take over from there for Penta. But again, it's the same map pool that you saw played out in the Premier Playoffs. And it's even though you could say the picks were different, it, even still, it went to that third map and Big had just enough, not much, to beat Penta. So if you're looking at these two teams, just the way they've played on LAN, that small margin, that three rounds, could now be flipped the opposite direction with how consistent Penta's been playing compared to how inconsistent Big has been playing. I don't think anyone would argue that online and LAN just is completely, completely different, different in Counter-Strike. Now, for those at home who perhaps are slightly newer to, to Counter-Strike and, <laughs> and watching competitive CS in general, Cash as a map then, what are the keys to victory? Where do we need to see people holding? Let, let's talk CT side. So I think Cash is a map where you need to play in responsive form. Uh, it's a map that has a lot of avenues that allow for pushing on either side, either CT or Terrace side. You've got your B mains, you've got your vent flank, you have just mid in general, you have counter boost, A main peak, squeaky. And the moment you lose any portion of the map when it comes to Cash, you need to play responsive. You lose mid control, start a flank through B main, start a push into squeaky, take something back because it's a map where if the other team is aggressively attacking you and taking piece, piece by piece, then you'll find yourself just so overwhelmed because CT spawn is a rather useless position, right? And that's what you get left with if you just fall back and turtle up. Yeah, something that we've seen from other teams, like back when uh, Oscar was playing with Hellraiser, something they did all the time was they would smoke deep on B main and push him into Sunroom almost every single round. They had no fear of, of pushing a player aggressively. And if they didn't do that, they sent a player into Squeaky. So they almost always had someone playing aggressively. And I think that the map in general just lends itself to that. And it's also going to be all about those rotate times. Like, how quickly does the CT side bite on what could be a fake or an execute coming in? Wow, a wonderful insight from you guys. And now we're going to get a wonderful insight from some beautiful men. It's going to be Moses and it's going to be Machine. Over to you guys to take away the grand final. You just call us beautiful, Dan. Thank you so much, you well, charmer. Oh, yeah. That felt good, didn't it? That feels lovely. A good start to the evening. It is. Yeah. You know, it starts your evening well. Citrus Blast. Absolutely. Man I'm almost out of mine. I'm going to need a, a special delivery on this guy. Yeah, you're going to work on it? Okay, I can work. I can pull some strings. I yeah. can make that happen. Definitely. Yeah, yours is a slightly different color than mine. How's you, how have you done that? <laughs> big versus Penta. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be, well, excuse the pun, big, as we are going to be seeing five members of the uh, T side just swarm themselves through B and towards middle as well. HS is going to be the first to receive, and he does indeed have to find a couple of headshots. Pushing through the smoke, I like that. Not letting them get full control on already. Nex's head is rolling, as is another. It's Tamsin that meets the same demise as Nex. And now then just Keeve and Legia. They have to pick up the pace, and they do so. One onto the site, trying to get comfortable, but he's locked in. Keeve somehow evades the nade, but it would be just for a second before it's sunny to put him to sleep. This looks like the end. Legia back against the wall, and now body on the floor. First goes to Penta as we kick off map one of this best of three grand final for the MDL League. HS has an incredible round there. He has to push through that smoke, which is dangerous in its own right. Instant headshot, falls back, gets another one through the smoke. A little bit of luck there, but you're always going to love that. I, I mean, the fact that, because when that smoke comes out, you, your, your teammate's so isolated, you have to make that decision. Is it worth pushing through the smoke? Is it worth that risk to try and get one kill? And if he doesn't get it instantaneously, he probably probably just dies in the fight. Yeah, so That's cool. really nice. Yeah. So cool to see what HS has done there. Not only does he get three kills, but the fact that he's now in the grand finals in none other than the UK. He's been here for a long time now, playing for United Estonia. We saw him, you know, in the uh, UK Premiership as well. Really? We did indeed. Nice. He's been around the block. Rogue as well. We saw him for a, a quick stint on Rogue. I'm going to do my best today to not get HS confused with Noble. You did call him Noble once, yeah, or twice. I'll do my best. It's easy to mistake. No <laughs> promises. It's an easy mistake to make. If at any point we get a 1v5 from Sunny and I go, net gear with five, <laughs> <laughs> I've made a mistake. Well, I mean, at least at least Big gets the plant in that pistol round. You can see they save up. They've got one smoke, two flashbangs, some upgraded pistols, but no armor behind it. So obviously, this is going to be a third round buy, and Penta's going to figure that out pretty soon. Probably already assuming it based on the uh, based on the plant. Looking like they're going to pinch towards the A bomb site though, with that one player over at door. That's the Gia, just waiting for the action at mid. Yeah, and a double boost as well. Unarmored T's up against a scout. Crystal could do a great deal of damage with this. He's very competent, especially when there's a scope attached to his rifle. And perhaps he's going to be the first CT to meet this T side. There is one just sitting by that squeaky door, hoping to catch them off, perhaps a little overextended towards Fork or Main. And indeed, both of them are present there. 
This is such a slow paced round. Uh, I mean, there's not necessarily any, any kind of reason to be. It's actually pretty interesting considering Big has no one watching for any B push. So finally now it gets started. They're very fortunate they don't get flanked here. And here comes the scout. Ooh, hang on. And he's dinked up, and Crystal's already found one with the scout, but from behind, you can see it's going to be innocent to catch him off at another trade. Suddenly, a 2 vs 2 does emerge as the dust settles, and the bomb will be settling on the site, you would hope, but no, it is hard to acquire HS. He's going to inspire some paranoia with that frag, and now, gob, bomb, 10 seconds. He has to cross back to site. He's still paranoid from HS. He's already halfway to main, but the bomb will go down. Yeah, another plant here, though. I mean, this is a great round. Another plant into this, so more $800 bonus for them. They've gotten three kills as well. Anything, oh, wow, they got four. That's huge, and Gobby can actually do this. He's not going to be able to. HS too quick on the flank, but that is far too dangerous for Penta. What an incredible round from Big. There, you could not ask for more from that. And I mean, you were... You were they should have never gotten it. I mean, they don't have <laughs> enough to do this. And, and I think part of it is, uh, you could see, I mean, a little bit of unfortunate timing for Crystal, uh, yeah. who's peeking out, obviously. But he, I mean, he needs to make sure that he's spotting for that boost, because they, they get all the way to that, that highway box before he even notices them. That's yeah. too much progress. Well, he was given so much responsibility, yeah. right? You have a scout to hold up against potentially five people walking up middle. No other eyes on it. Yeah, they were walking. You couldn't hear anything. As, uh, at least if he gets the eyes on it earlier, they can call up to a bomb site. Right. And I think that probably lessens the amount of damage that's done towards that defense there. Either way, mid is going to be such a difficult place to defend. And you can see already, <gasps> oh, they're both blind at different times. Nex is going to be a little bit upset with that, but Tapson knows exactly where he is, and he's been a star this game, but look how blind he is as well. How has this happened? The power of flashbangs is clear. Three bodies, and every single one has been flashed. It's incredible to see as Penta are going to line them up, and it seems like they're going to knock them down. Just Gob and Legia left. So, not impossible. We saw what he was capable of with just pistols, and of course, Gobby is the mind behind this brigade, the brains to the brawn. He's been trying to keep these guys together, and wow, Sonny, so precise and so confident in converting that into a kill. Goes for a fresh magazine immediately afterwards, and now left to Legia. Is it Legia? Is it Legia? I spoke to him. Apparently, it's Legia. Legia. Yes. I thought, I thought that had been decided already. It had, but I just... Uh, <laughs> you just wanted to pose the question. They're, they're German, and, and he's got, like, Ja in his name, so it's, I always feel like it should be a Legia. Okay. Well... His biggest benefit here is that he's got 45 seconds to work with as that clock ticks down. So, I mean, he can make the defense feel a little bit impatient. Mm. Going towards the A bomb, so this is where two players are. So that's not going to be the the most ideal. Obviously, you'd like to go towards B bomb, so at least get another plant. Edison watching for it, though. That's a clean kill. Nicely done. 3-0 for Penta, all based off of Zen in mid with the UMP. Those flashbangs. It's usually the defense who really struggles to stay unblind to actually get kills. This time, it's the terrorists who just couldn't handle all the flashbangs being thrown out. Yeah, I mean, coming over boost and being completely blind, you have tabs and walks out, gets comfortable towards vents, and Zen's pushing back through the smoke to get another. It was very well played from him, making that UMP sing in middle. And things are about to change up the pace. It looks like Big have just made the call. Get your booties into a main... And so Sunny, one grenade could do an awful lot of damage, but they do seem a little too far away for it to tickle them. And now it's a question of just finding those deagle frags. This is, I mean, it's all, it's, it's possible. It really is. The rounds like these are possible, but you need someone like Tabson to do what Tabson does best. Yeah, range though. It's going to be difficult against these M4s. That's a double kill. It's, this is easy shooting for wow. Penta. Yeah, that's that's a smart decision for Penta, playing entirely retake on the bomb site, and considering Big has no smokes to, to cover that cross, there's just no chance they're winning that round. Mm. So another buy coming out now. This is a big one, and I mean uh, honestly, one of the big, uh, one of the one of the huge factors of this match. I have to stop doing you that. I'm doing it, it intentionally. Yeah. I'm, it's just going to happen naturally, <laughs> isn't it? Um, I mean, the story here is is obviously Tapson has had one of the best individual. Oh yeah, this is that. Uh, this is made popular by Body. And you can see it looks like the X-Ray, they're jumping over it as if they're just like, we don't want to get messed with, but Gobby's going to get the opening kill in mid, not the AWP. But, I mean, it is all about, Tapson has had one of the most stellar tournaments for a single individual I've seen in a long time. And yes, it's, you know, it's not the professional level, but, I mean, he's just been destroying everyone. So this is all about, can Penta stop Tapson or at least outlast him? Yeah, I mean, he has been unbelievable. To definitely the highest fragger in the tournament here for the MDL Finals, and... It's not even just that, it's the consistency by which he's delivering here now. Tapson's walking, walking out middle with God B, but Crystal's look, positioning has gone unnoticed so far. This is interesting. Finally, will be caught off, and the numbers now favor very heavily towards Big and extended by God B, strolling through middle. And another body drops, this time coming in from the A side. It's going to be Leggy up. It could very well be the perfect round. This is the dream scenario for Big. You lose four rounds, you don't want to lose a single rifle coming into the fifth. Yeah, looks like you're going to lose at least God B. I think, yeah. 
It just notices him. That's an easy kill. Low HP. Probably doesn't need to be taken. That's spamming through the smoke as well. That's a dink on the next. That's frustrating. The bomb's still not planted. So actually, he's got time to whittle this down. If he can get a clean kill here, I don't think he even saw Keev peeking from the right side of the entrance, though. So first round for big on the board. An important one at that. And, and they're having an opportunity now to try and push and pressure Penta even further in the money situation. I am very intrigued by Keev and and how kind of, uh, well, in contrast to our discussion surrounding Tabson, I mean, with Keeve, it has just been so hit and miss. Very literally, actually, as an AWP player, he's been so influential, and at times, and others, feels like a non-factor. It's it's sometimes, it's quite a recurring theme with Orps sometimes. Well, I mean, his biggest accomplishment at the moment, as far as I know in his career, has been when he was in alternate attacks, helping them qualify for E-League Season 2, yeah. which he did online. Look at this B-hit, though. HS has a lot of work to do. He's going to get the first one, but traded immediately. Every single shot has been a headshot so far from the Estonian. A lovely mixed bag of nationalities, and so far, Penta hold the lead. For now, though, Looks like we're going to be seeing big hold control of the site. Crystal tried to change things. Next court off. The smoke is not good towards CT, and they're going to try and replace that with flashes. An unnecessary investment if their utility was more precise. Bomb down. Though. Decent positioning as well. One watching the flank. One in checkers underneath the vent. That's the AWP, though. Not the most ideal. Plenty of utility on the CT side for this retake, though. When this Molotov, this smoke comes in, they can block off these choke points if it's done properly. If it's done properly, Innocent towards heaven, he's going to try and get something off to obscure Keeve's vision and great timing from him. He now has to be worried about Sunny's flank and that's going to be his responsibility. Oh no, back turn, body drops. Nice work from the Finn. Trading back and forth, leaves a 1v2, is all on Legia. Tags up Sunny, can't quite finish the job though and the power of these nades is so clear. Two to find and there's no seconds left on the clock. The defuse will come in and Sunny finishes the job in the fragging department. So, five to one, and that's gonna be Big's economy gonna be looking a little in tatters should they concede the next. You can see the difference when the utility is used properly, right? Because we saw Big mess up that smoke towards CT spawn and trying to cross over that, that causes them to lose an extra player, which makes it a disadvantaged uh, situation in the post plant. And then obviously Sunny uses that Molotov perfectly, prevents Legia from chasing him down and actually forces him to run through the smoke to stop the, uh, the defuse. Mm. Easy kill from there. Nice play from Penta. It's crazy. I mean, that's a prime example of just, you know, the power of these nades. Sure, you get we had the pop flashes initially in middle. We saw how that effective, effectively won a round for them. Yeah. And in this example, you can see his decision making was limited to one option. Run through a smoke and hope for the best. Just because of a Molotov and a smoke grenade. This is very well put together start to cash for Penta. Couldn't be going much better. They've got big in a reset scenario, and, and I mean, the big thing is that they, they won, they responded immediately with a win. The unfortunate thing is that big had won their round with at least four players surviving, so they didn't really have to spend a whole lot in the rebuys. That's what's allowing them to continue to buy here. And again, no player towards the B bomb site. We saw this earlier, it was, the, it was the round they had pistols and everything in the second round, I believe it was. They've got to be careful for that. In the future, that could be dangerous. Oh, that's big, actually. The taps and drops was off. Was that intentional? No, it was not. He's calling next back to put him back up. Because, I mean, eyes on Crystal. Jumping for info, we'll be able to kind of relatively roughly locate where they are through the smoke, but instead, no, it will be Sunny. How has two come to be? Wow, shuts down anything considering that A push. It's now Legia who's going to be considering emerging through the smoke. Catches Innocent through a reload. It's Tamsin, actually, that finishes the job. And so we are level. Bomb needs to go in, and that will give the advantage towards Big in a much-needed round for them. The animal on Big is starting to push further forward. There is Crystal doing a dance, and it will be finished off. Look at this conversion from both of them. The rifle's firing on all cylinders now as HS, just a UMP to his name, desperately trying to claw his way back into this round. It looks like it's all over for him. Yeah, nothing to do here. This UMP is not going to be that effective. It's an amazing gun at the moment, but this is just too much to ask from it. He gets dropped with ease. Trading rounds is going to benefit the T side as well. Pensa might not be able to buy into this, and they can force up a little bit. Sonny could get an M4, they could get pistols behind it, but I mean, do you want to really risk that economy this early on in the half? I don't think they will. But finally, Big has allowed themselves to uh, claw back into it. Got B leading the way as well. That's huge. 10 and 6. Wow. Round. Yeah. In -game oh, he, had that, fragging, he had that round where he had like a three entries. He got the first three kills coming out of mid, so that's huge for him. I thought we were about to see triple flash, but we are. Triple flashbangs towards middle. Trying to keep them away from getting close towards boost and it has worked I mean, you can see how clear that that has been for them to get some mid control mid control versus a known eco a couple of kevlars perhaps just to bolster their damage from penta and that smoke look what it's done does keep legia back he's going to be anticipating this one they know they're going to be sticking together trying to make something happen keeps already caught one just through the uh, edge of the smoke another challenges him they're all dropping keep needs it's a confidence boost from the german orpa and just two more then sunny who actually is hit by a nade, which takes approximately one point of health from him from four to three. <laughs>
That that's actually a super clever play from from Penta. Obviously, a little bit. I mean, obviously desperate. Uh, I guess sure. is the best way to put it, but coming through that smoke like that, if Keeve doesn't have the proper communication, I mean, you could see, even though Keeve gets the three kills, the AK-47 watching from mid actually has his eyes over there as well because Keeve calls out the smoke, is blocking his vision. He can't see if they can get there. So really good comms from the big side. And this is going to be an easy round from here. Sunny too low to actually go for anything. He is going to have a chance to meet up with Tapson. I mean, he could die to, like, what, a paperclip. Just yeah. throw a paperclip at him at this point. He's dead. Stabbing his toe. Oof. Ah, he's horrible. Those are the worst. Yeah. Thanks very toggled off. You do see Crystal fall eventually, and then that will be finally Sunny. He did stick around for quite a while, he evaded nades and some tagging. But this is key, picking up those quick three. And, and yes, they are against unarmored, unequipped opponents, but picking them up all the same, especially as an operator, and they're not actually that easy to do. When you've got three people strafing out with powerful pistols, it can yep. be a real, real ball ache. And I think I think I'm remembering this properly as well. The match that Keeve actually went nuts in for for the Elite qualifier was against Godsend, I believe. And he Ooh. it was a it was a series against them online, and he was absolutely insane. He was very very precise to the op, wasn't missing much, and that's what kind of caused that massive upset. Yeah. So he's definitely one of the um, uh, you know one of the hidden gems from the region. He can just get into that that mode. You know, you see some offers get into it when it's just yeah. everything's hitting. Everything seem to be, is hitting. seem to be like that, right? Right. Yeah. Just something happens. Something goes on in their mind or in their body that means that every shot seems to be good. Now, three to five. Looking for that fourth round. Both have conceded a player. Godby, however, has been the primary fracking presence for the German side. He'll be have to watch it from the sidelines in this one. Still gets a kill, though, coming out of mid, which is huge. It's a nice pop flash from big to allow Gabi to get that one. So much attention on mid at the moment, right. though. Is this, is this a kind of a, an, an outcome from what Big have been doing earlier on? I know, f I know from the professional scene, just every team is just so nervous about mid. No one has a good read on how to actually defend attacks towards the middle portion. So now rotating back towards A, that's a good opening kill. This is big, and here they come as well. Penta are uh, just ripping them apart. More specifically, Sunny is ripping them apart. This could be four. It is spectacular work with the M4A4. Rips them apart and finds the sick for Penta. That's far, far too easy. No trades coming in whatsoever. Great performance from Sunny. We saw him have a couple Good game, or a good game yesterday, I believe it was on train. He was wow. very, very strong. So I mean, this is this is just great fundamentals. Nice control of the M4, four different targets. They all fall. And it felt like you could only see like a millimeter of Keeve and still finds his head. Spectacular yeah. with four HP. Right. Unflinching. I mean, to be fair, he is Finnish. Yeah, they tend to do that, don't did they? Did you see Alu's face when he won Sarlada? Yeah, he didn't even realize <laughs> it, did he? <laughs> yeah, but that probably helps you. It certainly helps you keep that mind clear through those scary games. I mean, what scarier uh, kind of game will these guys find themselves in than the nerve-wracking grand finals? And, and this is why mid is so intimidating. Just look at this. Some utility usage really isolates one player over at Sandbags. He could have been forced out by a Molotov, but instead it's just Nax just walking up and taking off his head. Mm. But all five players are big with attention towards mid, and they take control of it. And I mean, this splits the defense so, so far. Sonny is very limited in where he can move. And just the lack of information is the most unnerving thing on this map. And this is where the question is, is, you know, do Penta try and find some information? So far, they've just kind of stood their ground, haven't moved a muscle. You can't at this point. You can't make the play quite yet, just because, I mean, you can you can risk it if you want. But, I mean, this that opening pick so early in the round, Big just pauses, right? They're waiting for that information play, and Penta knows it. That's why they're not going for any kind of a peak. Sonny's doing what he can, but right. it's nothing really that valuable. And talking of information, you see how little Sonny can acquire at this point. He's cautious of highway. He knows that's his responsibility as well. Squeaky, main, and three CTs still find themselves towards that B side. Now the door comes open. He'll be asking for an assistance because here they come. A flood of fully equipped T's are oh, about to go and pressure down for Sonny. Can he seriously do what he did before? He's so low and they're going to be put lower by Tapson. Now the bomb needs to go in. The smoke will keep Innocent at bay for a while. And the clock is extended from 20 to 45. Keeve then going to try and do something, but Innocent has other plans. The AWP are down, and we're back to level playing field. That's a huge kill onto the opera at Forklift. Such a powerful position. Tapson mans it up, and he's just as dangerous, obviously. Flashbang comes out. No, that's a smoke, and Tapson's just taking off heads. Tapson, three frags for him. Incredible work. And Crystal's just going to yeah, completely tap out of that. We're not interested. That will be yeah. the fourth end for Big. And I mean, just when, you know, you see Keeve, you see how, how difficult it was for him to convert that frag with an AWP. Yeah. And yet Tapson's doing it against two of them with his rifle. Really, I'm very, honestly, I have been very impressed and converted to the Tapson way of life uh, after watching him play here. Yeah, he's he's had a, I mean, he's been known to be this big of an impact player for some time. It's just been, you know, 
this transition from big, I mean, these are players that used to be in the professional divisions of Europe, so we used to see him so frequently, so right. obviously he just kind of naturally fades from memory, but I mean, it's been very apparent that he has the skill level to be this dominant. Mm. Big thing is, you can see, I mean, Penta moving forward into these gun runs, they have to stop Big from controlling mid that way, because all they could really do, since they don't want to go for this information play, since they felt a little bit nervous about it, they just gamble stacked over towards the B bomb site. A lot of faith in Sunny to hold down A on his own, and that time it just doesn't pan out. You can see the CTs are experimenting with a new way to hold middle, and that will be boosting into vents, but it looks like Keeb's going to actually be keeping him busy. Look at this. He knows what that smoke means. He's think I think he may have caught a glimpse of HS on the cross as well, and it's, he kept his teammate at bay, so the, the, the actual boost into Vents has been cut short. And the CTs continue to be paranoid about that middle area. Sunny's going to try and find some form of information towards Beekeev, and taps in a pun, doing their very best to keep them busy, and look at that through the smoke, just the, the very peak of it. And he finds the tip of Keeb's head. Actually, this time, I mean, it is a change in the defense as well. It's just the 5-7 of Zen jumping over the highway box and spotting. Late boost in, though. That could catch him off guard. Aggression over towards the B-bomb site is very nicely done. It's a 5-on-4, which is great, considering the arsenal they have is a little bit weaker. Legia throwing some kind of a fake over here at A, but he eats a grenade. This is going to be a hit on the B-bomb site. Legia is just trying to keep as many bodies as he can over on the other side of the map. And it's working. Even the highway player is starting to move towards the A side of things. It's two members, and they're holding hands. Sunny will be the first port of call. It's undoubtedly as well as HS is going to strafe out. One falls. Would they be expecting the second? It's highly unlikely. You can see Gobby's already got eyes on main. As has Tapson. Two backs turned. And he's not going to be able to convert them into frags. Just the one as Tapson's left alone to his own devices with 20 seconds left. And he considered a spat of aggression. Instead, gets that bomb down. It will be default. He can't find himself a beautiful afterplant scenario. But he will just find himself doing a dance too towards him. Both in his line of vision. He'll be the first to peek his crystal. He knows he's against an orb and innocent. No fear, unflinching as he strafes into the crosshair of the German star. And it will be the seventh. That's going to be Pentes really kind of getting a, a, a comfortable number on the CT side of cash. Yeah, really nice stack towards checkers. I think that's actually a double kill if some of those flashbangs don't just come out really, really awkwardly for HS. Some of the timings of it was not with him, but he catches players off guard. Seventh round. Big doing as best they can to grind down some of this economy. They've done a decent yeah. job, but they've got a... Uh, this might be a half buy. They've got they've got enough money to, to upgrade some Tech Nine, some light armor, some utility, uh, try and do some damage. And actually, we're seeing an AK being dropped. Look at Sonny, <laughs> seventeen frags. It's I not mean, bad, you've is got it? you've got Crystal, a very prominent AWP, another German actually, uh, with the AWP. He's got two, if not, I think three frags, and then Crystal's running around with seventeen. And these are not just eco bashers either. These are full buy yeah. slaughters. Yeah, I mean, he had that amazing hole in the A bomb with yeah. four kills, didn't he? Yeah, he's he's such an impressive player. He, he's been playing very well in this tournament from what I've seen, which is uh, which bodes well for Penta. I mean, yeah, if, if I'm if I'm not if I'm mistaken, which which players were I, I might be asking? Uh, this might be a tough question. I might be throwing you under the bus for this one. I'm down. Um, when was it that when Penta the players all went to Mouse Sports that trio so so long ago? That was like Nex. They joined like Gabi. Yeah, other yeah. Players. No, so I, I mean, a lot of these big when, guys when have played in the Penta. Or that was when not Penta, not Penta was gutted, right? Yeah. That was. Um, Penta at the time had... I forget exactly who the trio was, but three Nex, players Nex, Penta. Spitty, and Dennis. Okay. I think it was those three. Okay. I could so, wrong. only Nex. Yeah. Nex has played under Penta for sure. Nice. Nailed it. I don't think I nailed that, but we did our best. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, tactical pause here, probably from Big. I mean, this is a this is a risky investment for them. We saw that AK come out. That could... Um, that could do wonderful, or very bad things for their economy if they don't, if they can't convert this round. But I think it's, it's kind of the sense they probably have that they've done a good job of grinding some of the economy away, and they just want to keep that pressure on. Remains to be seen how much they're going to buy around it. So we have to clarify: got Sunny from Finland, HS from Estonia, Crystal from Germany. I mean, they are multinational. It's We're crazy. seeing a lot of these multinational teams come. And I'm cool with it. I mean, yeah. this is something I wondered when when it would start cropping up, right? And then yeah, I got it all was excited, just a matter of time. Got all excited about the, the King Gwyn experiment, and then they did nothing for a year. Looking good now, though. It is certainly looking good now. But then, you know, sometimes when you have all the best aimers in the world, finding leadership can be the hardest thing to do. Oh, I've every every region has issues with leadership, except for Denmark, apparently. They have, like, the four best in-game <laughs> leaders. In yeah, the they're, okay. they're not doing badly. It's just not it. fair. <laughs> God damn it. So here it is. AK-47 on Gabi. Lagi with the Tech-9 armor. Some deagles out there. Oh, look at Penta. I like it, though. Some surprising aggression over towards B. Big not expecting that whatsoever. And of all the people to take down, Tamsin is a prime target. Nice work from them. 
Now Sunny's going to be challenged out towards Boost. It should be an easy shot to hit, but Gobby has a rifle. Perhaps not expecting that. This is that AK and pistol buy. We've seen it implemented on time, times usually into the second round of play. It's the kind of the NIP buy, very retro approach to Counter-Strike, but they're bringing it in here just because they have some additional funds. Yeah, they're still going to be able to buy after this. Right. Uh, we mentioned their economy. I think they had one player at 5k and a bunch of in the, in the 3,000 range. So they're going to be able to buy into the next round despite this AK pickup. And let's have a little look what we see from Zen. So late peaking Z. They, they just assumed it wasn't manned, and now Zen creeps round and profits considerably. Rifle's down as well. Bomb is on its way towards B, and I do think this is going to be a bomb plant. Hello. Money in the bank. Keeves going to go for a plant that does enable him to do something from checkers. Or perhaps even go towards CT. Interesting. I like it. Smokes itself himself off and is going to use it as a little bit more of an additional wall. Could be a double peak though, and he has fallen to Crystal. <laughs> well, P2K of all things. But bomb down. That was a mission complete. Yeah, that's huge. Penta, a little bit of an over-rotate. I mean, no, no real danger at A, so no reason to evacuate everyone. Could have kept one there. It's a small mistake, but it's going to allow Big to have a pretty solid buy into this next round. Yeah, Sunny's great. Got B at 13 and 11. This is probably the most quiet we've seen taps in all tournament. Only if he hadn't kills, got that yeah. bomb down, their money would have been pretty, pretty tight. That's nades, yeah. that's nades galore for them. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what it is, right? It's extra utility. It's huge. All right. That's big for big. Oh, damn you and your name. It's just, all it is is doing is highlighting how much I use the word big. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's, that's all this is that. doing. <laughs> that is all it it's has just done. embarrassing us. Yeah, we need to find ourselves some more descriptive t words. It's better terminology. Large. Large. Gargantuan. Massive is always a nice one. You I like, like massive? massive yeah, yeah, yeah. I always use massive when I'm describing Mexican food. <laughs> 13. 13th round. And lucky for some, perhaps this time for Penta, because Tamsin is on the warpath. He knows. HS is close. He certainly knows now as he accidentally is going to scroll down on his mouse. Accidental, perhaps. If not, just looking for some information. He's certainly got a boatload of that and some bullets to the face. Trying to cross and a little late on the spray. That will keep this battlefield quiet for a moment longer. So many nades that he had to use to get out of that situation that that had to have been a mistaken jump on the mouse wheel or something like that, just because that, that's a crazy, crazy thing to do. And he's lucky to even get away with his life. Three players in mid for big. It's back to mid control. This always like feels like such a suicidal peak from Innocent. I mean, any, like I, he's just playing for information, right? If you're the only player here, as soon as you feel pressure, you're going to start falling back. The question is, is he going to feel it too late? Because they're going to start running up along this wall. Look at this peak. Yeah, Nex isn't expecting it whatsoever. That's nice. Should fall back now. He's got the advantage. He's got what he needs. He's going to stick around, though. He wants to go for more. Surely not. An additional strafe. There could be one boost. There could be one close. But Innocent, he is feeling it. Now, change of plan. A call may have been made, but he's going to have his back turned. And timing is everything. Four to four. 20 seconds though, the T side are going to start feeling that itch and HS, he knows it as well, trigger finger itching equally, backing up onto site he realises the less time that it takes to find them, the problem is exacerbated now then Zen, what have you got? 10 seconds he's going to go for Gobby, tags him up, he just needs to stop that bomb from going down, 8, they've got time now Sunny and Crystal are realising that this may prove to be just a little too much of a mountain to overcome oh, that's a nice pick though, taps in a little over aggressive around the edge of the smoke, low end HP he falls, that makes this a little bit more doable. Still difficult. Two players in checkers for big. There's only mm -hmm. one nade on Sonny. They might, if they don't get a kill soon, they might just decide to hold off and not go for this. It could just be they're waiting to try and get some exit kills. Yeah, I mean, Sonny's positioning is implying that, but now he starts to move and got beers low. Lekia jumping for information and converts it. Just Crystal then trying to keep hold of that AWP. And you talk of exits, this could be at least one. It is. Keev gone. That's the AWP down and a big investment taken away from the T's. Yeah, that'll be quite nice if they don't go back for it. They're not going to. So, yeah. AWP taken away. Wow. Really nice round from Big. But, I mean, that, that's the reason. It, it's it's not... That's why Innocent, like, if you're going to fall back in that situation, you either... If you're going to stick around that long, you either have to clear it so wide that you know there's no one close up to that box because he wasn't getting that intel. And that's what eventually punished him because Gobby hears the footsteps. So you need to either back away much, much earlier and much more convincingly, or you need to stick around and make sure you clear it so wide that there's no possibility you're going to get punished like that. And there we have it. The one solo UMP we saw as Zen has done. He's done some spectacular things with the UMP, even earlier in this map alone controlling middle with it and look where he finds himself with it again the wall of smokes coming out from the tees which is actually proving to be quite beneficial for zen timing is everything should he come round, he's going to hear the double vent break he's going to assume there is footsteps in checkers his teammates will confirm it you can hear or rather hs can hear that and here he comes coming from behind gobby's perhaps not expecting it nade was in his hand he has to hit it does so and it's going to be all he can achieve 
but damage has been done by his teammates. Look at this. I mean, Keeve and Nex barely have 50 health between them. Oh, no. HS, that's a big risk. That's huge that he gets brought down that low. He's taken out of the fight. He's got to be a little bit more passive now, and that forces Sunny. It forces Crystal. They have to be the aggressors from the flank. This feels like, a, I mean, for them, it must be deja vu. Sonny's like, I've been here before, and he uses his nade perfectly. Next, the receiver of that, he had his baseball glove on. Catches that one with a smile on his face. Now, though, Keeve and Tabson battling to defend this bomb site. The CT's coming in like a plague, trying to spread as wide as they can throughout the site. The various entry points and now Keeve so low, and he's going to be put lower. It's Sonny to finish the job, and we will get that defuse. Wow, nine for Penta. They've actually been looking, re I mean, really comfortable in these retakes. Yeah, they have been, and that's that's actually a uh, retake that'll test your patience as well. They waited very long to get that started, pretty much the full timer. You could see, and look at these past four rounds. Three out of the four have come down to defuses. Some very, very close rounds. Actually, one of them, excuse me, was Keeve with the Deagle over the B-bomb. So that wasn't close, but the rest of them. They've done it again. Yeah. Last round of the half. That's why you're seeing this buy up out of the big side. AK-47 on taps and UMP on necks. All pistols, but yeah, this Penta side has looked very, very good. Aside from a couple small blunders that have just ended up costing them around, they've been a, they've been very solid so far. I, lo I love that decision making as well. Keeve had the AK for a while, and it was just like, you know what, mate? <laughs> Take it out of my hands, please. Please, Tapson, do do what you do best. Not a rifle. He's been given the bomb as well, so a lot of responsibility on this man's shoulders. A little microcosm of how Big's game has been this tournament. And let's have a look then. Keeve has the. Uh, Excuse me, Crystal has the responsibility of holding middle. And we saw what happened way back when he was holding a scout. Now he's upgraded, has the AWP, but will he be expecting Sunny's position? It's almost a guarantee he won't. Now down, and numbers favoring the CTs. It makes life even more difficult, but good flashes and Molotovs are going to force them out of position. Innocent back turn, but still manages to find safety as Sunny continues to do damage from that position. It means more backs are turned. It's so strong. Sunny has single handedly won them the round. Finally, he's down, but damage done. And now Tabson with no health, no hope. And now Keeve with no teammate. That's so sick from Sonny. He's been such a monster at this A-bomb site. It almost feels like Big, at a certain point, should just should have just started avoiding the hot hand, right? Yeah. They go right back to it. The boost is so powerful and innocent there for great backup. And you know, lesser experienced players, myself included, would have got one and be like, oh, the jig is up. They know where I am. I need to get out of here. It, you're still at such a disadvantage, even if you're a terror side swinging wide. Yeah. Uh, especially considering they spotted Innocent as well. So they had, to, they had to deal with him being in the bomb site. You can't really commit to clearing out boost if you know there's one on the site as well. Didn't have the utility to block him off from peeking. They would have liked to have everyone in that gap between the uh, the red box and the squeaky door. That would have been nice. Wonder if these are like a, you can do like a skybox molly onto the top of boost. You know, from like behind squeaky. I feel like that is one of those Molotovs that would have been found if it existed. Yeah, it's been tried. It'd be, a, it'd be a nice one to have, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, just a safe one. You don't even have to think about it. Should you have it? Yeah, I don't think that quite. Well. I think main's too big for that to happen. Yeah, I think it would just pop in the air. Yeah. Okay. Well, it is 10-5. Penta moving into the attacking side of things. And it does say that he's a T, a CT. That's that's a little bit of an error. He's definitely uh, on the attack. As you can see, all five of them. What on earth? Keeve feeling aggressive. Tamson feeling even more spicy because he has five backs turned, and he's already going to put one bullet into the back of the head and a second as well. Zen down. And how Zen is Tamson's mind for the one versus five. He's already killed two. This would be an ace clutch. But they just know exactly where he is, and Sunny has been spectacular so far in this, both this tournament and this game. What is that now? 24 yeah, that's sick. coming into the second round of our second half. There's no finesse there as well. That's just punishing. Just a straight-up B-rush. And even though Tapson, he gets a good read, he goes for the quick flank, and he gets a couple kills on it as well. The rest of his teammates just fell so quickly that it didn't have any impact in the round. Now this is what this is always something I find very intriguing. Yes. Oh, never mind. It's Nex has kind of solved the problem for me. But you had like Tabson, Tabson, and two other players had not bought anything, and then just Gobby and Legio were investing. And I thought like, what's the justification for that? But no, we're all good. <laughs> ne Nex that. was, Nex was that slow, player. slow on the problem, slow on the buy. This is looking like it's going to be more fast pace from Penta. A lot of utility used to get into this bomb site. That's a nice pick from Penta. Oh, Tapson. That's dirty. Can he get more? The Molotov's going to stop him from doing anything. Pop flash through. They hear the pin. And there goes Tapson's head as well. And that sound cue has got so many people killed. Emerging through that smoke with confidence and just getting shut up. There's a big conversation about that, that pin noise yeah. and sound cue on the grenades, isn't there? Well, I mean, the argument is, or the discussion that I think resonates with me most, is that it should... It should not make a noise unless it's a uh, the underhand, underhand makes the noise. Yep, I'm okay with that. Yeah, then if you're absolutely. doing, you know, if you're doing the the Stewie 2K, pull the pull the pin and push through, 
a smoke then? The underhand flashes are too powerful if you don't far have too, that. Yeah. Far too powerful, yeah. And I, I imagine that's what that sound key was initially for, was for the underhand. Either way, it's 12-5, and I mean, Penta are running away with this one. They've looked spectacular. Winning the pistol after a double digits uh, first half. Let's put them in good stead, and next, not sure what the mindset was there. Just hoping to catch them up. I mean, yeah, this is the full eco, and they are just getting absolutely roasted. This will be a, looks like a clean round. There's two things. Either they're so tilted that Tapson just closed the door on them and is like, go have fun, <laughs> screw you, or, or that was just designed to keep the door closed so they wouldn't think that someone was in the doorway. Yeah. I don't know. Regardless, it, either one of them didn't work. Comical. Comical, yeah. though. Nice let's go, let's go with the first option just for the hilarity of it. <laughs> Screw you, Nex. You're staying <laughs> in that death box. I'm not dying with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Locks him in. Uh, it does feel like kind of like almost Hollywood, you know, like banging on the door. Let me right. out. Tapson. Please. Please. <laughs> Please. He's in here with me. 13-5 oh, then. Penta are just Team Ace. On it. All no, was it? Yeah. Zen, Zen rebuying, though. It was Team Ace on Penta. He was what? I think he had an SMG beforehand, or maybe he, he died. No but all, well, all five were all five had kills. All right, I'll give it to you. Yep, I'll give it to you this once. And we have a gl Mr. Glass Cannon. It is key. A whole lot of damage, but takes some as well. His responsibility has been allocated to the B bomb side, which is where the majority of the Penta side are on their way to. Aggressive as well. He's going to try and catch someone just on the edge of that smoke. I like it. Setting himself up for a play. That's his own smoke. Gonna be coming a bit just yet. Molotov's gonna force him out of position, but no sound cue. They do not know he's close. And ooh, oof. If he had just shot out of reaction know, from right. those tracers, he would have just got a kill out of that. That's it. The bomb is not committing towards B here, so make no mistake, despite a huge investment of resources from Penta, there is no immediate plans for a bomb plan. Look at the difference as well in some of the defenses. Who who is that exactly from the CG so that's pushed up so far in mid or anything events? That's the Gia. He's now got next just rotated to help him out, but he was very alone for a long time, and Innocent does not clear all of his corners. That's an easy kill, and now they have to go back for the bomb as well. Look at all this pressure. Sonny and HS are just so stuck in checkers, getting naded from both angles. Yeah, I mean, there were fights on A as well. That's what's so crazy here. Is the T side is now spread so thin. All of those nades invested, all of that damage taken, players lost for very little ground. You have, con you have checkers, and wow. HS, spectacular control. Many would have expected a tap there, but no, he has such a firm understanding of those spray patterns. He makes it work. No spray needed for Kiev. One bullet of the AWP ceases his existence for the 19th round. Yeah, Sonny's going to have such a huge spot. They're going to have to smoke off Kiev, but he's already out. I don't think they're going to expect that whatsoever. When does he pick up? When does he go for something? Ooh. There it is. Zen gets clothesline, not expecting it, but that's a great kill from Crystal. And there's the positioning from Sonny working out so perfectly. This has been a brawl. This round has just been so back and forth. It is that tug of war we talk about. Now next, though, drops down, tells Sonny exactly where he is. He's the elephant, but wow, still takes the Finn's head off. And then Crystal, very quiet so far in this game, has to find two, and it's not going to happen. Next, so precise with the M4. We'll find a very much needed round for the German side. Big find six. And it took them nearly 20 rounds. Yeah, but it's uh, also they've done great economic damage to the CG side. Uh, this is going to be another rough buy, a low on utility. They're going to have to do some drops. So this is the nightmare situation for Big is you have to string so many together at this point. And if you lose this one, the game is, is basically just over at that point because right. you're going to be broken on economy. You're going to have to save at least one round. And then suddenly you're on match point. Yeah, this is the double reset territory. Got B with the UMP, though. I mean, it can help out if you get some kills with the bonus money. Keeves at least able to buy up some utility, but, I mean, 1,800 and 1,300 are the two biggest amount they have. I'm excited, actually, just to see if Big can do what they've done versus Godsend. Let's not forget, this is the team that was down something ridiculous. Close to 10 rounds they had to claw back versus Godsend, and they have done it. That is why they're in this grand final. That's Keith. a nice big pickup. Yeah. Loving that. And he's going to back away into safety now. Legia has his cover as well. Look at this split. You know, two middle, two B. Even the A players out on a, on a rotate mission. But Penta, as the battlefield falls silent, perhaps the call will be made to get your ass back over to way because we do not know where that bomb's going. Yeah, but they just use so much utility at the B bomb site and they haven't gotten anything for it. All they've done is lost a player. It's about to be. No, it's not. Oh. Keith can't pull the trigger in time. Nice kill from Crystal. That's going to keep attention towards this B bomb site. But I mean, Nex is in great position here. Footsteps to get information, and still Penta. Uh, Sonny, what look is at this? Sunny. Sunny is, so, is so close. Sunny is the critical kill here. This is so odd to me. It's Pushing fun. into B, the bomb still towards A, and Gob. Patience is rewarded for the in-game leader of Big. Now three v three. Crystal's the one still towards that B site, and his job is here to sell this as much as possible. Keep those CT eyes on him. A spray starts that, and. 
Maybe a frag will finish it. Yes, no. Tags up Gobby even lower. 42 now. Leggy in the meantime catches Zen in middle. It's just back and forth tit for tat from these gentlemen. And Leggy, a huge play. Bomb and information dropped. That's so crazy that they that they went back towards the A-bomb site. Gobby's got to be so confused. As, as like a very tactical, very structured emulator from like the 1.6 days, he's just going to be saying, what the hell are these guys doing? Penta's applying so much pressure to checkers, but not ever committing to that B-bomb site, really. Just trying to see... I guess they're just trying to exploit the fact that Big will not have any idea what's going on, make some kind of a play to get information, try and be aggressive, try and clear something out and get a couple kills and let the round snowball, but not working in these previous two. Still though, they, they still should be buying in this round. Mm. Another round they have forced rebuys at a big, another round they get three kills on the board, so the money is still gonna be very, very low on the CT side, so it, it should be a buy out of Penta, and if not, it should be at least like a, a half buy, a force up with the pistols of the Tech Nines and the Deagles. Yeah, that's exactly what you're gonna get. They buy to 2K just to have a chance at the round and also not completely crippling themselves financially. And you're right, Penta have been playing some seriously chaotic T side. It's hard to even follow as a cast, and never mind as someone playing against it. Progress on B, progress on main, progress in middle, and we we should say I think maybe this this tactic from Penta, what they're doing, it might work out differently. But there's been some an interesting defensive setup. They had four players leaning towards that B bomb site from the start of last run on. So I mean, they were perfectly geared up to deal with that. Wow, that's the rifle gone. So clean from Legia. And another one, heads rolling, Zen now. His teammate's eyes potentially rolling as well. There's Sunny though, takes off next. You just don't have the equipment to do anything left with this round, it's all gone. That was a you know, a Kevlar Deeg and a rifle lot now on the floor. Leggy's done the hard work and it'll be Tamsin to just finish off some of these easy ones. Great round from Legia. And you can see everyone else, Penta, they don't even want, I mean, HS was there trying to get the bomb and just didn't want to mess with it because Legia is just keeping great eyes on it. Although he's gonna have a little bit of a flank here. The timing could work out in his favor. Tapson's watching for it though. Sees it at the last second, taps away, clean headshot, eight rounds and finally they stabilize. Four players surviving means they can finally build up some money. Really clean, peeking for the info yeah. with the jump and immediately scraping back out to take that fight. He knew he had the better equipment, he had the confidence and converts it. I mean, what's so crazy is you look at Penta's scoreline, they are just three rounds away from taking the first map in this final and they have been for some time now. See what you've got for a us, lot Penta. of emphasis towards the B bomb site for them early on, though. It seems like they don't have a lot of variety in their T side, or at least they want this game plan to work out. There's another rush. That flashbang does not bother Keeve whatsoever. That's going to slow everyone down. Feels like actually, despite Penta being the aggressors, Big have gotten the advantage in manpower early on in a lot of these rounds. And Keeve's been a big part of that. Every time they try and throw bodies at B, Keeve's there in, in some way or another, not necessarily hitting the shot, but twice in a row now. A damage? Yeah, considerable. That's sick. Wow. They have been chunked down. It was HS and Zen, and look at their health pools now. Half a man left, or one combined with Zen and HS. And now still utility invested. There's plenty of flashes for some form of a retake play if they fall into that scenario, but Penta have to make progress first. And Leggy is going to hamstring them even further. Sunny, the lurk, gone. The rest are going to be progressing towards B, and Keeve knows it's no longer his responsibility. It will be God B. He makes his whereabouts known with a flashback, trying to delay, waylay this attack as now here they come. It will be a quick flick, looking for a second as well. Such an adjustment, one more, and the teams are going to come crumbling down. It's Penta who just d dissolve versus, well, Keeve's AWP and God B's spectacular hold on site. Yeah, this is just another another round where it's clean win for Big. Penta not really doing much. Wanting to hit that B bomb set early on, sending four bodies there so early and doing nothing else across the map. So. At this point, Keeve and Gabi are going to be very, very locked into the fact that they're going to get most of the pressure in this half. I think before the next gun round, I, I feel like Penta needs to just take a time out, figure, figure something out, talk something over, maybe come up with a new idea, but they haven't even shown a look towards the A bomb site in the gun round. Outside of maybe a lurker Damn, you're right. Yeah, we yeah. haven't actually seen something, yeah. any form of execute. You know, no not mid even control, like no A bomb site. I mean, th this is just where Big is like, all right, if you're just going to be every time, like we're, we're ready for it, obviously. And Tabson, you know, we say he's been quiet on the CT side. It's because they haven't come to his domain. Now they will, though. Next meantime, silences that flank towards highway. And he's going to get a second as well. Now he can just hide away and wait for Tabson to finish the job. No, he's gone. Next, equally as low as well. Just two points of health. It's going to be a question of trying to stop that bomb from going down. The Molly will not do so. And he's just so close to putting his toe on that Molotov and making it a 2v2. Why did they just, just run the gauntlet like that? He's going to eat a nade for his troubles, down to 30 HP, and there goes his teammate. No real chance of winning this round for HS. It's a nice dink, but he can't clean up the kill. Good retake from Big. They're going to be on 10. The comeback is on.
Keeve, even though they don't even go to his site this time, he still gets two kills. That's huge. Much more spread out on the big side of things. You have Sonny and Innocent at 28 and 20, but then the Germans, Gabi and Tapson, both at 19, Legui at 14, Keeve at 12. Yeah, very diverse on both sides of the court. Now, I really want to see some variety. Oh, I was, was going to say something different, something <laughs> else from Penta. It's been very rinse and repeat. You challenge middle, Leggy is going to shut you down. You challenge eight, Tapson's there. You go B, well, that's that's a different story together because there's usually four CTs waiting for you by that point. Well, I mean, it's a good thing they didn't go for some kind of a mid play oh. because there's three players here from big. But I mean, the, the big thing is Keeve rotating across the map now with the Oppers being mobile. That's going to make things so dangerous, so nerve wracking for Penta. We saw what he did on B, you know, he's no stranger to going for opening picks. I did hear squeaky open there, that's going to incite some paranoia, but Legia's on his way up. Info gather crystal. Did you not see that? No, he was locked in his crosshair and he's going to convert it into a frag. Lovely work. In the meantime, though, both orbs have fallen out. The masters of the scope variety are, have been taken out of this round, and now in round 24, it's Rifle City. Taps it, one, and a second. Not enough in the magazine or enough time on the clock for him to take that fight. It's just going to be HS then. From either side of the map, Gobby's going to be caught out though. Nice work from HS. Can he do this? 50 seconds as comms fall silent from either side. And two players are locked in a game of brain and brawn next. Eyes on HS position. He shuts him down and a roar erupts from the big camp. That's one of the closest they've got to being tested, actually, in these last couple of rounds. Yep. And next passes with flying colors. HS is going to be kicking himself for not just going towards the B bomb site. You at least secured yourself a plant, and then you put the pressure on Dex to make the correct decision on when to rotate. So really, really giving up some of his strength in that 1v1. Either way, I mean, Big is just winning the battle for information. They, they, they're being able to rotate in position before these hits from Penta come in. They're be able to get, I mean, two players die over towards A. Nexus still rotated from mid and into position back in quad to clean things up and hold down the bomb site. This is very nice. Penta not being decisive enough at the moment. I mean, are Big just masters of the comeback? It's not the first or even the second time we've seen this team concede a mad deficit and then claw their way back. Well, I mean, look at their logo. Bear claw. So that's like a bit of bread, isn't it, in America? It's a donut. Damn, I was close. Breaded products aside, this one has just been <laughs> really swift. Yeah. What on earth? This was a full buy. It may not feel like it, and suddenly you can see he's doing circles of complete. I mean, it just summarizes how he's feeling right now. Yeah, I mean, tactically, they just don't seem to have a good good feel on this map. Everything's been grouped up. They don't really feel a whole, whole lot confident spreading out into some kind of a default, finding some of the duels and, and, you know, using two players to find an opening kill somewhere. This time, though, I mean, that's that's the thing. A full buy when you have all the utility that they had, I mean, executing through the smoke is just such a risk, isn't it? I mean, you don't have the information of what's on the other side and didn't catch anyone off guard. Keeve, I think he was even blind there. So, yeah, one of those games. It's just one of those games when you don't want to hit shots. 13 now to 12. They've completely closed this Shout one out to Fred Durst. Mr. Durst, big fan. Yep. I can't quite pull off the red snap back, though. Few people can, I, feel. I don't think. I don't think, I don't think Fred a whole did. Lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Definitely didn't. <sighs> this, so I, need, I would love to be able to bring up that score just to recount when this started, um, when we do stop looking at these. Well, I mean, the, the, the words that are being exchanged now, you can see this is going to be a collaborative effort. Looks like Innocent's taking the, uh, the helm of this one. They have been stumped. Have they? I don't think they've won anything past the initial three after the right. winning the pistol. Win won the pistol, and then it's just been, uh, I mean, so smooth. I mean, look, let's look at that last round. I mean, look how quickly this ended. You can see. Oh, nope. I thought. But it was. You uh, did ask for the scoreboard. I did. No, but then I, I was trying Seven to straight. smoothly transition into <laughs> the replay they, they chose to run. Seven straight for big on the CT side. That is dirty. One, I mean, two, three, four, and th five, that's the thing. I, I even, I don't even, I like the kind of plays that Big was making. I thought that was very interesting that, you know, taking checkers control, leaving two players mm. there to just kind of harass the B bomb site. But they didn't seem to like have anything after that, right? They get in position and it seemed like they're hoping that they get kills. Like when they practice this tactic online or something, they're used to finding kills. Someone they're used peaks. to someone coming yeah. at them, yeah. And, and Big's not obliging them. So they don't really have like an end game once, once they're not getting those like waterfall kills that just kind of snowball the run out of control. Waterfall kills, I'll tell you, I like and that. And then I Good went into snowballing, so I mean, I, I did a couple different we uh, allegories everything. there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, my mind is racing. Gotta keep it consistent. Yeah, <laughs> consistently vague. <laughs> okay, the call's been made. They called the timeout, let's not forget that was Penta that made that decision. They wanted the tactical timeout, and that's because 
They've worked out something different. We haven't seen a group push from Squeaky and Main, a pincer movement as if you will, but the pressure is going to be having to relieve Keeve. He is the eyes on Main. And with their limited utility, it's going to be a question of if he evades a flashbang or two, he's set. Messes up his own Molotov. It's going to keep him safe for a second, though, because actually they can't enter through quad. They're going to have to burn their toes, and they do. Takes the risk, and Crystal Profits. Big work from Penta so far. Now pressure on Legia. It's relieved, and it's looking great. Sunny chimes in with two. Now three. He has just beheaded Tabson. Chops the head off of the big snake. And now Sunny's trying for a fourth. Why not? So effective with that deagle. And look at that. You know, you call a timeout. You haven't gone to A in what feels like forever, an eternity with weapons. And this time they just burst onto the site. Yeah, they barrel through. That was really, really nice. A little bit different from the time they tried it with the AK-47 where they were a little bit slow and walking up so the footsteps wouldn't be heard. This time they just explode. Nothing like losing seven rounds in a row where you have rifles <laughs> and then busting out some pistols, jumping through smoke. It's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> It does, but it happens so often. I know, it's so frequent. So often. It's so gut-wrenching. Like, we couldn't do it with everything, every item we possibly could desire. And now we just throw bodies at a site with, I think they had four flashbangs, if not five. I mean, it is it is very much a case at times where we're maybe overthinking something tactically. Maybe yeah. you're thinking too much into what you what exactly you need to do instead of just playing the game and kind of feeling it out. But to put it into perspective how effective those rounds are, when, when it does go like that, you also remember they scavenged three AKs and an AWP. Yeah, they like, saved a lot of money in this. What? A three, two AKs, I believe. Uh, or at least one two M4 AKs and an AK. Two AKs and an M4 and an yeah. AWP. Yep. They had to buy a couple. Now then. This time we are seeing a little bit of the Penta default, at least to start things out. Very quickly they get out of it to boost some players up. Still got some eyes on the B push, still got some eyes on mid. This is a one and done spot for Legia. This is very dangerous. One pop flash could ruin everything. You can see it there. Is he going to get away? Yes, he just barely does. Now they know he's here, though. Molotov can ring in, but no, they're just going to take the fight, and HS wins it. I like that confidence from HS. He knew exactly where he was, and he said, fight me. Come at me, bro. They know presence towards Vent, and all eyes are locked on. In fact, they're boosting into it as well. They really want to shut this down, and I like it. It's working out so well. Gob tags up another. Teammate finishes the job. Crystal falls. They're melting in middle. One of my favorite desserts. Oh my god. I cannot believe Big just destroyed the mid attack that like so that. Sick. Boosted into vents as well. Yeah, it was like a SWAT team executing that. But not only that, they had people pushing highway and boosting in vents. They were like, shut this mid down now. Oh, almost. Sonny's got to be careful. He has the bomb. If he dies here, there's there's nothing. This round is over if he dies. Sonny's regretting his decision now. Yeah, he had to take yeah, fight. He was is. like, crap. <laughs> Oh, he's like, what have I done? I've made a huge mistake. Yeah, you know, it's just the sound of silence starts playing, <laughs> and he's like, this is not good. This <laughs> is not good. I'm confused as to why he went that deep as well. I don't know if he was trying to Feeling make it, it over towards the B bomb. So it can't, it can't be that. It had to have been maybe a miscommunication because Zen was over, uh, over towards the B bomb site for some time. Maybe it was just like never an update on the comms, but. He could have planted an A, and Zen was on the rotate back, mm. and they could have had a chance. It, it actually looked like it was going to be a plant A, and then have um, a Zen like just ambush right. in mid, but it just never came to fruition. And they can actually have a perfect buy here now, Penta, because of what they did with those Tech Nines. It's going to be very interesting to see how this works out. Pe per perfect, perhaps a strong word, admittedly limited utility and an arsenal for Zen, but. 13 to 14. It was seven straight rounds on the defensive side. You see Legia has been once again given that responsibility of middle, and he's done an exceptional job so far. When he is unable to convert it, his teammates are there to hold his hand. That's been great to watch. I think he has been very, very solid at the running this mid, yeah. Some of these peaks he's had. He's jumping over to see if he can spot the head, because you can spot along the wall as well. You get a little bit messed up by timing, but see the jump, now he spots one. A little bit of damage is going to force him back. HS, so there's the pop flash, and he's going to come with it. HS can't get anything though. But Legia like, runs out of nine. He's so low, so fortunate to be alive though, and we know he can still do something with that HP, but he's not going to be the first baffle to be found on the A side. Sunny, he's opened the door, closed it. They know he's there, surely. No, HS now strikes from highway. This is looking fantastic for Penta, trying to get themselves on that match point. But I feel like Gobby, Legia, save. and Keeve have to make the decision quickly, and it does look like already, yeah, backing up towards that B bomb site. They realize just they're going to have to head for that OT now. Yeah, it took a hot minute, but that round looked very well put together from, from Penta. I mean, so much pressure in mid forces Legia back. The pop flash is well up highway, and they just have the waiting arms of Sunny over towards the squeaky door. Funnel him into his crosshairs. He gets a kill and just infiltrates the bomb site. So, so tough to deal with. Now, innocent. 
He's got an idea of where they all are, trying to take some of these guns away from them. How much is Penta going to commit? They have two more players coming on the way. There goes Gabi. One of the site that hasn't been cleared out, but this would be huge to get these guns away. This could be like match defining or map defining at least. He doesn't know there's another one there. Oh, gone as well. Oh, it's horrible to watch as you see that, you know, the chances of Big taking this into overtime start to disintegrate in front of them. Because let's have a look at that money. No AWP. There you go. Keeve, by losing that, there is no AWP to try and battle your way to overtime. And now the pause comes in. Yeah, they have a decision to make. Wow. Well, I mean, they have to buy, obviously. But That's one of the decisions. Keeve and Gabi can have two M... They can buy two M4s. I think Legia just dropped one over, so he's not going to have utility. That was kind of the decision I was alluding to. He could drop a UMP and then get utility as well, but he chooses to drop the M4 over to Tapson which I guess that's not a bad decision whatsoever considering what we've seen from him in this event. But backs against the wall now. Big has to win two in a row to force overtime. Just hydrating. Yeah, some of that um, citrus <laughs> blast. <laughs> yeah, I've run out of water. I can't stay hydrated with my hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> okay. This is, I mean, I have no idea how much pressure. I've never, well, I can genuinely say I've never been in a scenario when you sit there and you go, Hey guys, grand finals. There's 18,000, 18,000 on the line for these first guys place, yeah. for first place, and this is the first map of the best of three. You are facing two match points against very competent adversaries, and of course the same kind of discussions are going on on the Penta side of things. Hey, we just we lost seven rounds in a row. If we lose two, we essentially have to start all over again. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I mean, all the pressure obviously on Big. If you're if you're Penta right now, you're just doing the same thing. I think you slow things. down. Or you make sure you don't go fast, because they've been okay. playing it decently slow at the moment, but you know at this point that it's going to have to be buy whatever you can, so you can assume that they're going to be missing some of the nades. So if you get towards, you know, 30, 40 seconds into the round, that's when, you know, the, it's going to be really apparent that certain players are missing smokes, because you're going to have A main is going to be wide open. If you have an AWP, you can be able to peek that openly and try and find a pick into the A bomb site. So Using every valuable second. I don't see a coach. Oh, there is, excuse me. There is a coach standing behind both. Kakafu, we heard from him in the pre-match with Matt Andrews. Kakafu is such a good name. It's badass, isn't it? It is. Kakafu. It does sound like it should be like a Korean League of Legends player, though. Just, doesn't that sound like Kakafu with the Z in mid? <laughs> Just sounds really... <laughs> sounds like that's what it sounds like it should be. You could cast that name pretty intensely, couldn't you? Yeah. It's quite nice. Yeah. Shouting Kakafu <laughs> to hundreds of thousands of people. That would be cool. Fun to hear a crowd chant that name as well. Kakafu. It's perfect. Kakafu. It's yeah, perfectly it's designed nice. for Three chanting. Syllables. Unlike whoever it was. God, I remember there was some awful chants going on. If you, t you have to design, like NIP, perfectly designed for chanting. Yep. Really nice work from them. Yep. Well, it's the three letters, right? NIP. And no, Virtus Pro. Three syllables, I guess. Three syllables, yeah. B-I-G. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too easy, isn't it? Penta. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> Penta Sports. Okay, we can work it out. Either way, this is it. Match point. Penta want to try and convert cash. And get one on the board in the best of three. Lekia, yeah, look at that. An unflinching confidence is punished from HS. Those two have had a bit of a kind of secret duel of their own, haven't yeah, they, through they the have. middle in this half? And I mean, the, the confidence for HS at 15-13 to just straight up take that fight, boost it up, not knowing what he's going to find on the other side. That's huge. Good opening kill. Low HP as well. He could just camp out here. This is a little bit of a tough angle if he scoots a little bit back on the box. It can be just a headshot angle, so your, your HP really doesn't matter at that point. Yeah, keeping it nice and tight. And I like the Penta, after getting the first pick, HS very proudly dispatching of Legia, but also they just kind of take things a little slower. Progress from Sunny in towards Squeak, and another body's dropped. Got B falls. Now things are starting to get shaky for Big. Their hard work could be squandered for the first map unless Nex can replicate what he's already done to Innocent. I think they know where Keeve is. They're shooting the wall. No, they're not going to oh check it. Oh my god, this could be huge. Keeve save the day. No, just the one, but damage done to two. You saw HS was tanked up earlier. Now Crystal as well is in a similar situation. Eight points of health. Nex, there's no one covering main. If that tell a lie, HS will be able to strafe out to that one. Only one on towards the site. Responsibility of planting has been handed towards Crystal, but he's been dunked. Now it's all on to one man. Tabson, you've been exceptional. You've saved your team. Timeless. Timeless occasions. This one is the most important, though. Either side, two peaks. Sunny and HS just playing with their food at this point. They have Nade, and it's going to be Sunny to finish it. Who else but Sunny? The young Finn finds himself 
converting that into a victory. That will be cash. The first of this grand final here for the MDL finals. Yeah, what a, finals. what a map. That was that was intense. Great game from Sonny. Yeah, it is very fitting that he closed it out because he was a star for Penta from start to finish. That was huge. But I mean, the fact that they were so stumped on their T side for such a long time, such a unique T side to start that regulation out with. Eventually they figure it out, but it just it just made you a little bit nervous that it that, that wasn't going to happen. Big looked like they were on yeah. that run. It felt like it was coming. I mean, we see the, uh, every time I've doubted Big on a comeback before they've actually converted it. That's why they're in this grand final. Yeah. Not this time. They've done a great job coming back in this tournament. Games I, they've been out. Yeah, every time it seems. And I do think it, we, this is all going to boil down to that Tech 9 round. That tactical timeout. Yeah, the tactical files and then the Deagle for the breaks, Sunny with three kills as yeah. well. Deagle towards highway. Tech 9's out squeak. He keeps like, just completely bricking it, throwing a molly on his Love feet. Love to see it. Yeah, Love brutal. To see it. <sighs> we'll leave it though. Our analysts are waiting, chomping at the bit to break down our first map. We have a 1 0 lead to none other than Penta. Oh boy, we're chomping. We're ready for this. Yeah, what an amazing <laughs> uh, game that was then. Uh, we almost saw the comeback from uh, Big, but it didn't quite happen. Seven rounds in a row they were able to take, but that Tech 9 round that Machine and Moses were talking about, I mean, that was the big one. Yeah, it, it felt very similar to their cash game earlier today against Godsent, where like they struggled initially, started to bring it back, and we're like, okay, repeat performance. Like They come out on cash, they aren't as good as they were in the first half as they are in the second half, or, or they're better in the second half uh, than they were in the first half, but it just wasn't enough. Ultimately, you know, they call that one timeout, and that's all that it takes. That's why I always applaud like a, a properly executed timeout. I feel like it's something that so few teams actually use. Yeah, by all means. And it's funny to me that, that you know, you use that pause and then your go-to strat's going to be that quick little I play on the A site. But, yeah. it, I mean, there's some legitimacy to it, right? You're, you're in the midst of a map. There's already been these kinds of decision makings and whatnot. And then the solution is something simple. Play fast, play in their face, and catch them off guard. And it's a crucial round that tips the tide of battle. And, uh, I mean, it was the battle of Tapson and Sunny. It's what we said was going to happen before yeah. the game. And they were the two players that really show up, showed up in this matchup. And it was just... It was so surprising, really, that Penta were able to throw seven on the bounce. But I, I have to commend them for after that pause and that Tech Nine uh, rush was just absolutely uh, incredible. But now we go into game number two, and I'm wondering like how that's going to play for the mentality of Big here. Yeah, I mean, you got to wonder how does that close game hurt you? And not only that, we found out at the break that the the map picks and bands that we talked about at the, at the beginning, we actually had them backwards. Uh, so <laughs> in reality. It's the same maps that were picked in the playoffs. It's Big picking Cash, Penta picking Inferno, which makes a whole, whole lot, lot more, more sense, sense to us uh, knowing that now. So be, being that that was Big's map pick, clearly they thought this is how we find success. Inferno at the beginning seemed like a win for Penta. So at that point, you have a 1-1 going to the third map. Instead, it's now a 1-0 for Penta going into their map pick, which they proved to be really good on. Yeah, I just wanted to bring some clarity to that. Uh, unfortunately, the, the sheet uh, had a little bit of a scribble, in. Uh, scribble and a switch around, and uh, it was Penta that banned Overpass and Cobble and picked Inferno, and it was Big that banned Nuke and Train and picked Cash. So all that talk that we had saying, oh my god, it's like the inverse pick. Yeah. This is so strange. <laughs> We're just wow. dumb. We're just stupid. It was just like a minor mistake. I'll take the heat for it, um, even though it was the sheet's fault, but I'll, I'll take the blame. But either way, yeah, big losing the game that they have picked, and now we move into Inferno, and Inferno typically isn't that strong a map for big either. Yeah. I mean, while it's not necessarily the strongest for them, I think they're still going to be competent on it. What, what really kind of rubs me the wrong way is that is that Penta is just so damn good on it. Um, and I mean, maybe I'm wrong when they go into this map and then Big are able to put something together because I think it's odd that that map does come through in the veto process, right? It's not removed by Big, uh, and they very much had the opportunity to do so. Um, but... I had said, oh, with Inferno in this mix, it's going to be 2-1 no matter what, whoever ends up winning. Now, having cho having won the pick of Big and transitioning to Inferno, the 2-0 possibility is very real. I guess it's which Big turns up. The Big that was 14-2 up on Inferno and just was playing solidly, or the, the Big that threw, threw away the, the 12 rounds following. But that's certainly what we're going to find out. Map number two is going to be Inferno. It's Penta versus Big at the moment. Penta have a 1-0 lead. Are they going to be able to close it out and become the champions here today? Or are we going to see a comeback from Big? We'll find out shortly.
Mark Avery Breeze in the Mountain Dew League Global Finals. Penta are 1-0 to zero up against Big. Can they go on and win the whole thing? Or are we going to see a comeback? My name is Dan Gaskin, and I've got Bok. I've got Scrawny on the desk. But before I start talking to these guys, I have a very exciting announcement. Uh, Mountain Dew League, or Mountain Dew in general, actually, are hooking up with Origin to start their own stream. It's going to be twitch.tv forward slash MTN Dew. Or Mountain Dew, but of course How it's going to be MTN. Yeah, it's nice. And uh, basically what's going to be happening on this stream, it's going to be every Wednesday at 9 p.m. ET, so Eastern time. They're going to be building a PC. They're going to be making a super gaming rig that you guys can also join in. You can vote for which rig, which rig part is going to be put into that PC. You can also win that part uh, every single week. And also, at the end of all of this, you can win that absolutely brand spanking new PC as well. So make sure to check out on Twitter all of the stuff coming from uh, Mountain Dew. That's very exciting. I, of course, will be tuning in. Hopefully, I can win the, a brand new rig so I can start playing games I mean, as well. Free things. Free things. Yeah. You really have There's nothing to lose. It doesn't cost you anything but hours of your time. And but I, you already give us anyway, I believe so. it starts on May the 31st as well until July the 19th. So there'll be plenty of time for you guys at home to win those spanking new prizes. You excited? I'm always excited to win spankings. I, th I hope I'm eligible. For, for, spankings? The, for the spankings? I don't know what's going on anymore. But yeah, that's definitely something that you guys need to check out. So twitch.tv forward slash MTN Dew is where it's going to be streamed. And it's going to be May the 31st is when the first one, every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Check it out. Now, moving on to map number two then. It's going to be Inferno between Penta and Big. We've seen these two compete already on Inferno in the playoffs. And we saw Penta actually take down Big 16 to 8. Do you think we're going to see the same thing happen again? I think it's going to... I actually, coming into the series, I would have predicted almost an identical scoreline. Like 16-7, 16-9 is basically the deviation. Um, being as we've seen the performance that we've seen from the players that we've seen them from, I think there might be a few more rounds for Big. On land, Tapson's looking even yeah. crazier than he does online. So, you know, maybe they won't necessarily be successful plays towards the A site, but the B bomb site, if he's able to just, like, kind of break through and blow apart the defense, then we might see Big get a few more rounds than that. But even still, after losing that first map, I kind of put this as a 2-0 for Penta, which would mean they go completely undefeated to the event if that happens. I think also that um, being on land and having this being the second map, I think that I'm absolutely in agreement with Bach there. We should be able to see a bit more presence from Big. I think Big generally kind of heat up a little bit as the series goes on, or at least certain players, um, particularly Keeve. Uh, he can have slower starts, but he just had a game. So now, with, the, that, with Inferno being the second map as opposed to the first map last time around, uh, I would love to see more of a competition. Plus, there's just more on the line, so... Yeah, but in addition to that, look at that first series against Godsend. If anything, that second map was a cooldown period for some of these guys. Legia True. and Kiev basically non-existent on that map on overpass against Godsend. I think it was like Legia and Kiev combined for like five kills at one point, and we were like 20 rounds deep. Um, you know, we were getting towards the end of that game. So if we see something like that again from those guys, if they have a shutdown from any of their players, Tabson's carry is going to have to be ridiculous. Like you could see a guy having to drop 40, and he's already done that so many times. Like someone had a breakdown of the kills. And at one point, he had like 118 total kills, and the closest person had like 70. That's well, like that's absurd. Yep. The difference between number one and number two is just so far. It's definitely uh, there seems to be a little bit of a gap, and yeah. that's uh, well, a, little, a little bit, a little, a little, a little, little that's bit. That's a big gap, rather large gap. It's like when you step off a train; it's, they say mind the gap. There, it's, it's ju not just a little thing. You could just fall down that hole. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, across the whole tournament, we've kind of had games where. Teams have been taking a very early lead, getting a commanding lead, and then we see the other team just fight their way back into it. Looks like they're going to be coming back with some crazy sort of play, and then they'll be shut down. Why are we seeing teams struggle to, to secure games, do you think? I mean, that's the money game of CS. So, you know, you lose your pistol round, the anti-ecos or the force buying the anti-eco are almost are almost guaranteed. Not quite anymore because of the way the pistols have gotten in this game. And some teams have some weird things they do with umps to try and uh, surprise people. So you get that 3-0, you win the first buy round, you might get that round, and then the next round's gonna be another save. So then a lot of you know a lot of games you'll start off 5-0, 6-0, depending on how the money stacks up early on. So that's why we see those like early takeaways where a team just gets a leg up. But after you hit full loss bonus on either side, if you're coming off of an eco, all of a sudden you have your op, you have full utility of everything you need, and that's usually the turning point but we can still see it spiral out of control even further beyond that until they can catch up again. 
So I think that it's just it's just pure purely economic. All down to the econ economy yeah. control. Yeah, we've seen a few teams that seem to be better at it, controlling the economy. Actually, I suppose Penta are one of those uh, teams. They've certainly been phenomenal this tournament. They're unbeaten so far, and we're going to find out if they can carry on that fine form. We're all done here talking at the desk. I know that these guys think this is going to go to Penta. Let's find out what the boys casting over on the desk are going to think. It's Moses. It's Machine. Take it away, guys. Okay, so they some, think it's they think it's some Penta. Penta love, yeah. Why not? Where have they been converted? When's this conversion occurred? I mean, you guys were flying the big flag not that long ago. I know. So the tides turn so quickly, don't they? They really do. Well, I'm just excited for Inferno in a grand final. It does. It's. I love that it's like a synonymous. Thing. Really, it isn't is. It? Yeah. yeah. I mean, good finals, Inferno deciders. It does just seem to happen an awful lot. And here we find ourselves, myself, Machine, Moses given the gift of an Inferno Grand Final. Yes, the second map, Penta, does seem to be the desk's favorite, but big stand on the other side of the stage here in Leicester for the MDL Global Finals. This is gonna be awesome and already first blood drawn on Inferno. It's Sunny's blood to stain the brickwork here. And what's just happened, Keeve? Three frags, three seconds, and it's going to be next then who's given the responsibility of trying to finish off Zen. He does upgrade himself to a Tech 9, trying to get something out of that 20 bullet clip, but no, it will just be innocent. Yeah, and they've already spotted him out towards the B bomb site, watching for that kind of a push. They were so aggressive as well down Banana. So they know exactly that he's going to be much, much later, and they can keep their eyes everywhere. What a round from Keeve, though. Three kills as a hull rush comes in. Innocent does drop Tabson. Gives himself a chance. I mean, there is plenty of time. It's just the overwhelming odds. So many decision make decisions have to be made in such a short space of time to try and pull something like this out of the bag. There's a fight with God B. Had that been a headshot, who knows? But no. Chooses to push and apply pressure. Needs to find the kill quickly, and he will not. It's God B then who keeps this round nice and locked down for Big. And they start with a pistol. Needed that. Going to be starting with some upward momentum. Yeah, that's a huge... He basically pulled them in. What was that? Yeah, I mean... Was they that out of apps? Yeah, he, he was just holding the angle in holes, and as soon as they got to the top stairs, he, he picks off one and then falls back in a pit and gets the other two as they try and stream out. That, that effectively ends everything. I mean, basically. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know... There was a little bit of utility on the Penta side. I'm not sure where exactly they used it. I think it might have just been a, a smoke. But oh well. Oh well. Not too much gained for Penta, and it does seem like they're going to be forcing into this one. No bomb plant, so... Just trying to make the second round count as our big as it still makes me laugh i know the meta but i still when i see five, five umps UMPs. yeah well i mean it's it's not even necessarily the weapon as well it's on top of everything it's also the utility look at this five smoke Jesus. four molotovs yeah that's where the big advantage comes in for big but it also means that one you know i mean one close p250 fight and your 300 dollars investment has taken away so much <laughs> I know. kevlar full nades including molotovs on ct molotovs that's even more expensive and a ump with one bullet that's it, it's that's really reality. frustrating it's really frustrating when that happens that is the reality we live in and god b now has taken the uh, helm on apps whether that's where penta will choose to eventually emerge it does seem likely now they don't have the information so god b's utility is going to be useless if they decide to explode out of these halls he's just got to use the weapon and hasn't spotted anything just yet oh, oh no the molotov is mistimed and he's gonna fall no he's not not quite yet there he is he burns himself but that molotov buys time 1g and now look at this, it's looking easy. All that money just lying on the floor. Jason's toes are curling at the loss of just so much of such a huge investment from Big without actually implementing it. And the one man that's used his nades is now left alone. Four players to find. They've actually recovered all of the UMPs and this could not have gone worse for Big. There is very little outcomes that are worse than this. Yeah, that's so soul crushing. Gabi just mistiming it, thinking he had an extra second to get that Molotov out, but it's not going to work. That's the danger of playing that Hall's position without actually kind of like the angle into the door. Yeah, yeah. The, the angle that he wasn't using would have been so, so nice. A little bit unfortunate, but either way, Penta, they just bust out the same strat twice. If that was his initial mindset, I wonder, you know, like, was that his plan to just get info and drop the molly? In which case, he was mispositioned. Yeah, and I mean, well, frequently you'll see from that position, that, like, a smoke streaming over, so you'll get some indication okay. it's coming. You maybe have a little bit of an extra half second, but I think they just threw basically a pop flash. Yeah, he was gone. And that, that caught him off guard completely. Or even worse, he dies to his own flames. Dropping off, Molotov does leak, spread, and catches him in pit. Despite landing almost under balcony, it's very interesting. Would be intrigued to see that back, but here we go. Penta concede the pistol and immediately come into the third with raw firepower. Four UMPs in a long range. AK gifted to Innocent. His responsibility does seem to be guiding currently towards Banana. You can hear the shots rattling off. Not 
sure what that deep flashbang was from the CT side. Doesn't do much. Penta being very, very cautious. Bomb still very far away. They haven't taken control of anything. That smoke down at the base of banana is going to let Legia clear things out and at least get an advanced position. Dodging bullets. Is he doing he, it? Oh, they're going to get aggressive. They're going to pop flash over it. And actually, that's perfect. Crystal is so blind. One for one trade, though. Benefit goes towards the terrace in that trade. Yeah, not only did you know they have the numbers as a t as the T side, but they've also lost their one UMP, the one SMG, preserved by Legia from the second round. It's now sitting under T control. And I mean, you, you just from Tabson's movement and that of Legia earlier is just you can set you can see such an emphasis put on information gathered. Ooh, Ooh big that's dink. A nice dink. That's quite nice. Not gonna do much though. And actually, this is a heavy lean towards the B bomb site. This is just gonna be. Guesswork win for Penta. Although wrapping around does expose him to a little bit of danger, but I, I mean, as I say that, everyone for big is rotating over towards the B-bomb side. It's just a gamble stack here. Not a bad call either, because what's going to happen is they'll just save these guns. They won't even go for it. Maybe set up for some ex uh, exit kills, but they'll be able to bring, you know, a UMP. They'll be able to bring three upgraded pistols into the next round. So another shot at kind of reversing the tables. Oh, they're actually finding a second SMG. That's quite nice. That's off crystal. So, yeah, Legia's hard work was not in vain. Maintaining those two SMGs, keeping the Kevlar as well, important for them. I mean, it wasn't that long ago we found ourselves on cash and we saw just how valuable hunting those Franks can be. Yeah. I mean, Keeve losing that AWP could very well have been the determining factor in that loss. It's yeah, crazy to right think how close end, that was. That, that was heartbreaking. Yeah. Either way. Big's actually being a little bit more aggressive than, than I thought they would be. This is going to be a kill onto Zen. HS is up next. He's going to come down the stairs. Tapson's distracted, though. A chance to take some more guns away from the CT side, but it can't be done. Bonus money being wow. won as well. That's three UMPs lost by Penta. Yeah, Big, Big could actually buy behind this if they wanted to. Tapson can drop a UMP, get an M4 if he, if he wants to go that route, or they can just all have UMPs again. I mean, are they going to... It'd be really dicey. It'd be a big risk. That would be a huge risk. That would be mad. And you saw how much money the T's did to have yeah. starting around that six, seven grand mark. That bonus money always catches me off guard, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. fact that they actually salvaged three guns from the second round. Just a little bit skew whiff. They don't choose to do so, but wow, that, Nate, that health just all went down and sink in another. Look at HS's health. What do you plan to do with that MAC-10? He is going to be the scout. His job here is to just bait and draw fire and get as much information as he possibly can before falling. That or you just sit him far, far back to watch a flank. That's Mike, another option. Those are two things he's good for. Is one, going and dying and letting you know where the player is, or just watching your flank. Either way, he's going to be out of the fight in this round. Does have some utility that he can use for an execute if they choose to go that route, but at the moment, Penta's main concern is finding out where all these pistols are, where the stack is. The answer to that question is the majority are on B. CT smoke. Now, do they choose to boost? It has been something that has been kind of shut down initially. Did seem to be the choice against this very wall Zen finds himself on, but doesn't seem like they're interested. Nice kill from Innocent up towards A. Just quick peek over towards the side. Drops Keeve at the corner. That's actually a pretty interesting fight to be taken considering the AWPer is Keeve, and that's that's the side of the map he's likely going to be on once he gets the AWP in his hands. That was a rifle versus UMP, and Tapson does prevail. So precise, spraying, connecting the bullets into the brain, and immediately leveled out again. Sunny keeps themselves, keeps Penta with the advantage. We saw it on cash, and it's happening this round as well. I wonder if this is going to be a trend on the T side here, but Penta frequently on cash was putting pressure on two different sides of the map at the same exact time, and they're doing it again here. I mean, all the pressure they put over towards B forces a rotation. That's what clears up A. So this is going to be a round for Penta, but actually, that AK-47 is going to be salvaged. That's a great find. A little bit of a mistake having an AK-47 all alone towards B. Nex is not going to have to invest in an M4 at all. Yeah, he's going to be a happy bunny. Um, this has been a very happy intriguing bunny. start. There has been so many saves, so many preserved rifles, some hunting as well. It's just been, yeah, a really intriguing four rounds to kick us off on Inferno. It is just a battle of trying to build some confidence, trying to build some money. Look at that. You can see the saves. Yeah. Oh, I mean, all things considered, Big's getting away from this 3-1 to one scoreline probably as good as you possibly could. Two UMPs are going to be brought in the next round. They will not upgrade those. Next is gonna, next is going to have an AK-47. All they have to do is buy the utility around these guns. So I mean, they already have three buys. That's going to give them... Plenty more opportunities moving forward. Even if they were to lose this round, they'll have the money to continually buy. Yeah, Keeve's going to be gifted an AWP as well because of that save. Now, I like Keeve on Inferno. Even in old Inferno, I got to see him uh, during the Meisterschaft gaming. And Meister that was, of Shaft. course, for alternate, alternate so attacks. Good. The team that did make the uh, qualifier for E-League. That was probably the uh, 
Biggest feather to Keeves cap as well. Yeah. Winning Definitely. this perhaps could be added to it. And of course, winning those relegation matches for the Pro <coughs> League. They are going to be next on Big's hit list. But this is step one. Yeah, this is going to be step one in a lot of rounds as well. He's taking control of Banana. Double nade. That's beautiful. Down to 39 and 34 HP. The two defenders, they still go for aggression, but they've got to bail out. They don't have the health to fight this anymore. They need to sink back into the bomb site. One smoke as well to use. Tapson's holding onto it for now, but that's so much damage. So much damage for free as well from yeah, Penta. Exactly. Really effective use of their nades so far. And now it does seem like a commitment has been decided upon, or at least three members currently held back from that Molotov, but that will start to dissipate. And now the Penta attack is starting to be forged. One man lurking, it will be Mr. Sunny, who's sitting around on apps. The rest, though, are about to walk straight into Tapson's Cross. So the smoke is good for him. They will surely be pre-firing. This has become a recurring trend, or they'll just be crouching alongside that smoke, using it as a guise for their assault. Tabson does the very best. He realizes his boost is not working out. They are making progress, crawling onto the B site, and it's gonna, they're going to essentially be playing retake at this point. And great tag through the smoke. And Crystal does one better. It's a frag through the smoke. They might have to save already. It's I mean, they, they, have, they have a lot of utility and everything, but they have so much work to do and not a lot of time. And actually, two players still over at the A bomb site. Gobby's probably already called this. He's he's pushing into A halls. Yeah, they're they're going to save in this round. Four on God four. Damn. So just to clarify, why did Legia find himself here? I mean, I would have assumed he'd have positioned himself on site. I mean, when you get tagged up, Tapson's boosted. Yeah, I think the save call came in, and he was he was kind of in a position where the smoke was clearing towards B, so he's exposed if he tries to run. So at this point, it's just hope someone evacuates towards CT spawn, try and get the, the AK-47s, and he's going to... I mean, this is... Okay, Zen. These are the small mistakes you can't be making. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, he, okay, phew. he gets bailed out by the bomb. Phew. It's all good. <laughs> that's a relief. <laughs> That See, those, <laughs> it's so, it's, I feel like it's a little bit irrational of me, but those kinds of like deaths that Zen just does there, those kind of decisions just really, really tilt me. Right, not, those, not those exiting with yeah. the team yeah, kind of thing. Exactly, there's yeah. no reason not to. Go as a unit, don't lose your weapons, and you know, you know the, there's a lot of rounds involved in competitive Counter-Strike, map by map basis, and the losing nice thing an AK is, here and there. Yeah, the nice thing is, again, much like at 3-1, to one, now it's 4-1, to one, but still, they, they have a very solid buy out in the field. Double up setup as well as the switch. is in front of fire, that's a little dangerous. Yeah, his teammate put it out with a smoke, fortunately. So he can escape and gets the first. Zen gone. And now Banana Control completely demanded by the CT side. Full white backs away. That's a great teamwork putting out that fire. That would have burned so, so deeply. He's going to look wow. for more. Lagia just hanging out. He might be able to get a third, but he spammed down. But good damage dealt. Four on three scenario. Yeah, exceptional work from on B hold here from Banana. Not only did they get the initial frag, the fact that his teammate immediately extinguished that Molotov so the peak could go down. I love that. And Tabson, so precise, so clean and crisp. Hasn't lost a point of health yet and doesn't look like he plans to do so here. Tell a lie, Crystal. Makes it look all too easy as he's starting to forge what would be a two versus four here in the sixth round. Yeah, the opening was there in the B bomb site, but next, uh, next closes the gap. I think Penta Innocent's got to be a little bit confused and frustrated why so much aggression is coming out from Legia and Tapson. Despite all the utility they're using, he was not expecting that peak. It's all on next at the B-bomb site. One on two here to hold this off. There is a Molotov in the hands of Crystal. Smoke down towards CT spawn. I think they spotted him. I think yeah. they know where he's at now. Shots are rattling off. And I like Sonny's positioning here. He's going to get info. He can hear one towards Speedway as well. Knows Nex is within construction. His information is starting to flow very effectively for him now. Crossing with that bomb is step one. And the call's been made. It's like, Crystal, you have to cross. And Keeve's got the zoom bang. And only one, though. Sonny, so good on cash. But I think time's going to be his worst enemy here. There is no way he can plant safely. Picks it out, though. Makes it a one versus one. Sonny, he's just got enough time. He's got it. No, he's got it. Bombs in with a second to spare. Sunny for the 1v3, the 2v4 in total. And he's got a good read on God B. It's all about hitting that shot. It's not going to happen. God B saves the day for big. Woo! Sigh of relief. A collaborative five-man sigh. As big picked that one up, but that was far too close. Yeah, it really was. That that can't be. That they can't lose that many bodies at the end. Great play from Sunny, even to get the bomb down. That that fake tap. Nerves of steel in that situation. So big get their second, but it was costly. Right, you have 11 seconds left, then you have the, <laughs> yeah. the gusto to fake and crouch peak. Loved it. I really good. Part of it as well is, I mean, you, you also probably feel in that situation, it's all you can do. Like, he's either going to kill you while you're planting, or you just go for it and risk it. Yeah. 
Pays Double off for him there, but yeah, this is where this strategy gets really, really costly. And when you lose four players and you have to rebuy one of the two AWPs that you want to use on the defense, that money's going to run out real quick, and it's still low. Either way, it had great impact the last time with Legia with the AWP, but this time, he's got to be careful. This, this is a boost. Oh, God, this peak has been punished time and time again. They're counting on a T-Smoke at almost at this point, but they get it. Great connection from Legia, and he's going almost for a second on CT. If HS chose to give it to him, now got B. He's back to where it all began, really, for Penta. Yeah. He fell so swiftly last time. This time the weaponry is different, and the timing is too. It's a boost for a boost, it yeah, seems. Yeah, boost of their own over the smoke. Sonny, I don't think he's going to expect this. Gobby's going to spot the gun barrel. Again, the <gasps> timing of the Molotov <laughs> is going to be so frustrating. Keeve and Nex oh. are angry at the moment that Gobby messes that up. Either way, he does get the kill, but he's got to follow it up, and he can't. That's oh. twice now Gob B has been a liability on the defense there. His timing with the Molotov is just a little bit off. Twice. Twice that's really plagued the big boys. They lost the pistol because of it. Or at least a big the part second of round, that. Yeah. The second round, excuse me. Yeah, you're right. Keeve destroyed the pistol. And, and here he finds again. Not only does he pull the Molotov, he chooses to release it, then withdraw his weapon. And in the meantime, <laughs> his two teammates his fell. His two teammates yep. fall, agonizing. I'm sure Gob going to be kicking himself. He knows that's a mistake that no one needs to tell him. There's no communication necessary for him to be both embarrassed and a little frustrated because this is going to be five and it, c it, it was a free kill. Back turned, no knowledge of Gobby's positioning and we can't linger for too long, but I'm sure he will. Punishing himself for that because not only is that a lost round, not only is that the fifth for Penta, that's well quite appropriately, but that's a reset. Yeah, it's the break in the economy. Now they do have a couple guns, I mean an AWP and an M4 they can bring to bear in the next round, so that might influence some of the UMP by some of the upgraded pistols as well. A couple of them had decent money. Yeah, Legia can drop That's a UMP if he wants to. Two UMPs. Yep. Two UMPs and a CZ. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see if they go for that. It's still pretty early on in the half, though, and if they lose that buy, the rest of the half is just kind of thrown all to hell. So, yeah, they're going to be a little bit conservative with it. I Pistols like it. bought up, got B with the armor. But what my question is, is when you've got the two, the two people that have weapons are on B, why do you peek like that, Legia? HS just sprints straight up banana and your primary investment, your primary chance, your win condition of the round is just thwarted by HS and another as well. He's lowering them all down. It's just Tabson who has anything left really to make an impact on this round. And well, he's not too long for this world either. He's on a site. He's miles away. Yeah, if you're if you're big right now, you might want to call a timeout in this next round because uh, you're going to you got to imagine emotions are flaring over there. Tempers yeah. are high due to the, you know, the, the God be mistake or just mistiming, not even necessarily a mistake, but. Yeah, th you're gonna feel that's a round that you should have easily won. So let's talk about the Legia peak. Now, is that is that that the mindset he's in now, where it's just a case of right? I have the AWP. I have one of the two real weapons in this yeah. in this round. I have to make an impact early. Like I have to make this possible. Yeah, that's the mindset he's in. And also, y you have to think as well. The previous couple of rounds, he's been aggressive at B with the with the AWP. One was the boost. He gets a kill Works. from that. One is behind. You know wh yep. where Car used to be, and he gets two kills there. So he's feeling like he can have success being aggressive in that fashion. But you could see Penta's just ready for it at that point. I mean, running up along the wall, turning the corner. Obviously, they see him jump over, and yeah, here's that pause coming in. They heard you, Moses. Yeah, great minds think alike. They're feeling that vibe too, and it's understandable why. Take a look at what the uh, the Penta boys are equipping. We've got still like 10k post buy for Innocent. Some in the 6k region. I I don't even. I think it's so crazy. I don't even know if Big can really buy in this round. They they might be forced to, I guess. I wish we had a tally of how many four buys Big have had. It's not that vast. No, well, I mean, they did take the risk earlier on of not upgrading those UMPs, which is, I mean, it, it pays off, right? Because they lose and, th and they still are able to buy in the next round. Sure. Um, despite that. So, I mean, that, that helped a lot with the economy. And they, they had that round where they saved four weapons where they couldn't retake the B bomb site or save three weapons or something like that. So they've, they've done pretty well with their economy, all things considered, as, as good as they could have. Um, this is just now a situation where when you're playing Inferno, we, we still don't know really how sided it's going to be one way. Yeah, we haven't had enough time with it. But it is a map that all players feel still that it's going to be, that it's CT sided. It should be. And you have that, and it used to be very CT sided, so you still kind of carry that over. And the fact that uh, I think uh, they're what, at six rounds right now, I believe six it is, two. for Penta at 6 2. Y you feel like they've gotten too far ahead where you really need to start, you, you need to start coming back in this. You need something to kind of hang your head on moving forward. So they, that, that's what might influence them to buy. They have around a 3K margin from my memory. Big would have to work with that. Now on the other side, I mean, Penta, that, that I feel like the majority of these uh, these rounds have come through from, from what HS has been doing, just pressuring Banana, even if they're not necessarily pushing it. I like seeing him 
with unfazed. He's lost. He's died to orbs. He's got that brought down to four HP from a double nade stack. But every round he's still up there, still yeah. contesting and keeping those CTs honest. Uh, playing banana as a T side on a, uh, as a Terra side yeah. Inferno. If you're one of the players whose job it is to go banana, you you just have to accept the fact that there are going to be some rounds that you just you just don't win. Yeah. Um, you're going to eat nades. You're going to take some spam damage. You're going to have to play behind smokes. It can be very frustrating at times. We always have to keep going back to it. You have to think as well, I mean, not, not just HS on Banana, who's done a pretty good job. You think the round that Sonny lost, I well, mean, that, that yeah. two on four where he gets all the kills, all this is aggressive, trying to catch him off, and they do it. Uh-oh, Penta's in trouble here. Two on three situation, still a big advantage in terms of the weaponry they can bring into it, but that's an aggressive play from Big that catches him off guard. You think they added the timeout, they might be a little bit more cautious. I like it. We've seen, you know, teams do it before. Cloud9 at Summit, one that springs to mind. Taking a timeout and picking up the pace straight into the head. Next with a CZ. Actually recovers an AK. Whether he wants to pull that out is a different question. Opts for the smoke instead. Crystal's trying to take this fight. It's going to be one out. Will the Orpa be able to bring home four kills and the seventh round? That is the question on everyone's lips here in the Leicester studio. One from either direction and Crystal. In this, in this situation, upgrades from Orp to AK. He's been back and forth. He doesn't know what he's doing. Trying to get rid of that AWP. Yeah, he's we just throwing, it. throwing the op away because he knows it's it's not a great likelihood that he wins that round. Just keeping it away from them, forcing them to buy it. And yeah, this is heartbreaking. You hate to see it. They line up. The nade is great. It's perfect. So much damage done. So many kills come out quickly. And also, I mean, even going towards Banana in the two on three, they still have a chance, right? And the AK is leading the way, as it should. And But because he falls and Crystal has the AWP, it's such a hard kill to trade at that kind of an angle. It's so, so difficult. So he has to pause and really, really consider it. Quick thinking from Crystal to get that AWP out of play. So Keith had to rebuy it. And it has been a game of money. As it often is here in Counter-Strike. Nice work though from Keith. Innocent gone. The pressure mounting though as he's going to try and keep those T's at bay with his smoke now. Gobby's off balcony. <laughs> <laughs> Just doesn't want to mess with it anymore, does yeah, he? Yeah, I don't At least him. he doesn't have a Molotov this round. So he doesn't have to worry about the utility. Yeah. Just keeping them at bay. They have this crossfire now, and it's very deadly. As long as Gobby doesn't overextend, doesn't stray too far from those uh, hay bales, it's very tough to break for the T side. They have to kind of push as a collaborative unit. Four or three of them just crouch walking through. That tends to be the uh, winning formula. But the CTs have a very comfortable read on this. Look, just leaving Tabson toward to his own devices on B. And here they come. Penta caught with nades in their hand. It's HS to be punished first. Looking for the second. It will be a very dinked Crystal who connects the shots. And Crystal's back again. Keeve gone. Doing so much, and now there is a certainly a bit of a negative vibe to Big. If only that dink had been one more. They can actually fall back off this as well if they choose to. They've slowed things down, making Big question this. There's Gobby in the pity spot, Sunny, but that's a quick deletion. Gobby is not having fun over at A, but next is going to ruin this plant. Easy kill for him. Sunny in a one on two. He at least knows where one is. And the nade, oh, the smoke is almost his downfall as well. Ooh, not far from his head. Tabson, he went for a marathon journey from B to A, and there's the AWP they managed to preserve. Much needed. Again, though, so costly. When you have Every a four time. on two, again, it's into a one on one from Sunny. They have not been able to stabilize this money. They're always just on the edge of being broken. The precipice of being forced back into those pistols, those UMPs, the single rifle. We've seen it all, and actually an example of that's now being displayed by Penta. Coming into our 11th round, then. That's a Fantastic Molotov. They're going to actually walk over it. Look at this. Damage to do it done to everyone. They're all so low, but they're actually picking up kills now. This is a problem. Be site wide open. If you ignore the Molotov and if you've got the aim, it can really get rather insane. Now over the smoke, you see Zahn. Actually manages to find the head of Nex, and can you believe it? Penta winning cash off the back of what was just Tech Nines. <laughs> they have to save again. I, I don't have the money for like this. Bigger gonna save again. Yeah, they've got an AWP to preserve. It. Can we quickly bring up that scoreboard as the save comes in? How many of those? How many rounds have we seen the T's win with CTs alive? Can we just hover over those T wins. One, two, three, 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 one. Every that's round that's been incredible. a save. Well, every round <laughs> they've won has been a plant as well, by the way. And they've been able to get into these bomb sites with ease. And look at their round wins. It's a 1v1. It's a 3v1. It's a clo Oh, man. Whew. That's, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, the swing in this match. I haven't seen that before. It could have very easily be going the other way for big, but it's just not working out for them. And I, I mean, this is the thing. It's so hard to, to have a good CT side Inferno when... You know, when Penta's gone halls, couple just a couple mistakes from Gabi at the inopportune moment. Some of the timings have just crushed their economy. Now it's it's a rush over the Molotov. Obviously, the B defenders were not prepared for Penta to be running through that Molotov whatsoever. Yeah. 
I mean, I certainly, I mean, when you see that Molotov down, you feel like you've done your job for another exactly. 10 seconds. Exactly, yeah, you're like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm okay, good let's get comfortable now, because the Molly's down, and oh, Keeve, he had something in his store for us. He could have been an ult mid peak. I think he left a gap intentionally. Something he's been doing an awful lot, actually. He smokes himself and then uses it as a, a temporary wall. This time, though, a flashbang does avert his gaze. So much from big and trying to just get that at first kill it seems to be their intention now is just try and hamstring the attack and then disappear got beat he's got a molotov. i was just i was trying to check his inventory <laughs> 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 he's got a molotov beware okay it's twice a, it is a crossfire in the site though nex is there he'll have first contact yeah ump from that range isn't Wonderful though. Here they go. That's his Q and Gobby does not go for the Molotov. Instead he takes a head and not a second. The innocent low. He's gonna get lower as he does drop himself into pit. This is now all onto next. He's been very much rinse and repeat, relatively predictable in that corner, and they see a foot. Sunny though blind, he's gonna retreat, if not just for a moment. The call cool maiden. What is that? Caught with a nade in his hand. This is a recurring theme as more, more bodies drop. Crystal is just lining him up, knocking him down. One left. Legia from B. And he's gonna take the most healthy member of the Penta side down. Sunny and innocent then. God, that's scary. No nades left. You just have to walk through that smoke. You know time is over the essence. And Sunny towards pit. It's just waiting for that tip of the head. It is such a hard shot to hit. There he is. Eyes like an eagle. Legia actually dinks him down. Hits that headshot. Now they're both just got scraps of health left. He has to go hunting. There's innocent. Nice peek with his teammate there. Sunny was there to trade if he needed to. And we go to wait for. I mean, this is obviously a bit of an exaggeration, but I, I feel like Big would be having a much more successful half if they just never bought nades. The <laughs> amount of times we've seen some of them drop because they just weren't prepared for a fight because they pull out a smoke or pull out a Molotov, it's so dangerous. I mean, the timing is just they're not feeling they're not reading feeling the game very well. Yeah, and it's just unfortunate. It is it is to a certain degree unlucky, but still, it's happening too too frequently for this. Yeah, bad luck only goes for so long, right? You have to get a break, catch your break, and. It just has to, for, for big boys, it has to happen now. Any further rounds for the T side coming into their defense, Penta are going to be so comfortable. And I mean, I know big, no stranger to a comeback. So close to doing so in cash. We've seen them do it numerous occasions, even on cash versus Godsend as well. But in, in Inferno is new territory. Well, and also, I mean, you can't, it's, it's always great having the ability to grind and come back in matches, but you can't be doing it every single time, can you? Uh, at some point, you're just not going to win it. There's a pop flash for Tapson. One player to the right completely blind, but Crystal's got it covered. He's going to go for more. He's got two. They can just head into the B-bomb, so they can just stroll in, and Sunny almost gets caught off guard, but recovers well, does eventually fall to Balcony, but they have all the information now that B is clear, B is open. It's going to be easy plant and win. Keeve, save this AK-47 for the next one. Another save, of course. Got be probably preserving his Kevlar as well, maybe just trying to catch an exit with the 5-7. We'll see. I don't think he's going to be able to achieve too much. It'd be a dream scenario, a, a lone AK. You know, Zen does what Zen did previously, and they get himself an AK for the next round. But yeah, nine to four, this will be. This is a, this is a, it's awesome a battering. T hat. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's looking for the proper. An unlucky battering. Word. Yeah, unlucky battering. Battering of timing. Because I mean, look at the scoreboard. There isn't that much of a deviation. That's that close. It's, it's actually. I mean, here's the here's the real crux of the issue. Though. I mean, just by looking at the scoreboard, the fact that Penta is able to get so many plants, like the initial defenses from Big, are wow. just not working. You're right. In fact, holy cow! Eight yeah, of that's the a lot. No, <laughs> no, nine. Excuse me. Eight. Eight of the nine rounds they've won have been a bomb explosion. Have had, have had plants. Yeah. Bloody hell! And there's been a whole lot of saving because of it. So yeah, just, I yeah, mean, some of those, yeah, some of those rounds are just calls from big to save immediately because they know they just have no chance of retaking. I mean, it's just such clean takes out of Penta when they get into the bomb sites. There's no chance of, of, of being able to win it back. So, I mean, the answer here is just have better early holds. This is what Keeper's trying to do before. He smokes it himself and then watches second middle. I like it. And he is going to be able to get out of that one, even a T-smoke to aid his escape. I like that idea. I'm stealing that. Look at all the damage that's been dealt, though. Sunny down to 17. Did he get legged maybe by the AWP? Or Crystal might have got hit through the wall. Entirely sure. Either way, some good chip damage done to the Penta players as they move towards the A bomb site. All five members here. No one watching Banana, but it's all right. They've punished it so much that I don't even think any of the defense has the balls to get aggressive there. Keith, perfect flash from Penta. This is that early pressure. This time it's going to be Gobby to shut them down, and it's furthered by Nex. One of the few successful holds you see here. The initial defense is a success, and then Zen. 
Zen and Crystal. They've got money. Yeah. They can do something. They have a whole minute to work with. Unfortunately for them, that bomb could pretty much not be in a worse place to retrieve. It does mean they're going to have to start hitting some shots first. Yeah, but Zen can wait here. No, no, he can't. He goes into library, gets picked off, and there is next to finish things off. A fifth round for Big. This time they do build up some money. Trade into some AK-47s. This is going to be a strong buy to end the half for Big. Same with Penta, though. They have anything they could want. Oh, man. 9-6 sounds a whole lot better than 10-5. Yeah. I mean, no matter what happens, Big is not going to go away from this half very happy. But uh, certainly, at six rounds, you feel like you've given yourself some kind of a chance into the second the half. Descending Keev towards Banana. I don't think he's actually personally taken this peak before. See so if he has a different approach to Legger. He's just going to be strafing out on the wall and catches a glimpse of one jumping back. Of all people, it was Crystal. Now, he has been brought down to 43. And legged Zen. Very similar to start to the last round as well. But this is when the responsive nades come out, and they are going to get Keeve on that wall. They do love this boost, and it works oh so well. HS, majority of his deaths, it does seem like he's had a nade in his hands. Down again, trying to implement some utility towards Banana. My favorite uh, call out in the entirety of Counter Strike. Banana? Banana. Sounds better in an American accent. Do you remember how many bananas it would take uh, before you die from. Yeah, the I think you have to eat about 300. <laughs> Um, every day for like seven no, years 200 and something every hour for 24 hours for like 12 years oh, okay. so just be careful of your banana intake boys <laughs> <laughs> you could get radiation be poisoning. very very careful well talking of bananas they are progressing through it and they are just melting this is what they've been looking for oh so long on B but look who it is it's sunny that was slam poem I've been working on 40 seconds then and all right then sunny You've done it once, or you've got close once. Gobby shut you up, but can you really, realistically make anything out of this last round of the half? Gobby's actually playing this very well, not progressing towards Banana. It's such a small thing, but uh, you feel like they haven't boxed in. But if Gobby's the one to die here, that, that opens up the rest of the map. That forces the big players to spread apart, and then Sonny can find one-on-ones from there. So Gobby just playing it patiently, holding an off angle where he has an, a huge advantage if Sonny pushes down towards mid. Quick adjustment from Sunny to avoid that flashbang. 10 seconds, though the CT's perhaps getting antsy. Uh, I liked it, Tabson. Just quickly getting that early information. Will that bomb be going down? The answer was a resounding no. You can see Keeve initial hold there. He got two and then a third, perhaps through that smoke. Bang! And the dirt is gone. It was innocent taken out. That's a really nice round for Keeve. Three kills and I th er, was it? Yeah, three, three kills and he even got the assist on the fourth. That's super nice from him. So finally, some of the defense is mounted early on, and there's no real pressure onto the bomb site after that. Good round from Kiev. But that re that half really is just going to be, if you if you watch that demo as big after this match, I mean, you're, you're going to say, we didn't necessarily do anything wrong, just some missed timings. Perhaps look at it and say, all right, guys, from now on, we, we have to be much, much more careful about when we pull out our nades during executes. Either way, big, big task for <laughs> for big going into the second half. And I mean, th that's the tough part. That was the CT side as well. So a comeback is much easier to do on the defense on this map. So they, they really have the, their job cut out for them. At least they're smiling. Keeve is at least. Yeah, and I mean, it's just getting that individual performance up as well. He is the, the hit and miss author, and he was hitting in that last round. But here we go. Is this going to be the last half for analysts? Felt like it could be. Giving pen to the edge. Big impressed so far in this tournament. They need to pick up this pistol, though, and a dink sets him up nicely. Sonny's so low, they want to try and apply some pressure to him. And Crystal, he's about to experience a bundle of pressure. His smoke is going to keep them at bay, though. I love that. Just in the nick of time, gets it out. Learning, perhaps, from God B's mistakes. This time, now, HS draws first blood. Another. Oh Sonny makes that two-point of HP sing as he takes Keev out of the 16th. Yeah, they have full control of this. Sonny, though, so low, doesn't need to go for that peak. You let your other teammate take contact. He falls. This is all that's left for Big. They have to take this bomb site. Heading up lane. Rotations are coming in as well. Ooh. Crystal being so patient. He's smoked out. He can see nothing. HS in the open, though. He falls. Innocent's got to hit that, and he does. It's still a three on two for Penta. What, what just happened? Nope. No, it's not. Double peeking from Legia and Bogob B, and they both get punished equally. I take it all back. This has just made life even more scary for the big boys. They actually have to kind of pick up this second round win. It's actually, it's almost a necessity at this uh, well, point in time. Well, they're going to save this round. Gonna, excuse yeah. me, the third round win. Bomb did go down. But the I mean, this is going to leave Penta 11-6 starting their CT half. Ooh, they're going for it now. All right. 
I've wrecked you there, haven't I? You have a little bit. Well, yeah, I, I, I think I corrected you, so I kind of wrecked myself, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought if they were going to buy this round, it would at least be... Nex could have dropped an AK-47. I believe it was Nex. Yeah. He could have dropped an AK, and I thought I would have seen that. Sonny could be in for a shock here. I think we are in for a shock. Tapson makes the Tech-9 clear, but nothing else has been revealed. There are plenty of nades and Kevlar, which may be a little unanticipated in info. Nice from Crystal, and there's the Molly. <laughs> <laughs> no, the surely not. Team. <laughs> Is he going to fall for the, the mo early Molotov or the premature Molotov? No. In fact, they got two on balcony. I certainly would not be anticipating that. That's that's sly. HS by the smoke. Crystal's going to drop. They've got th three players towards B, though. This is a misread of the situation. This couldn't be going better for big. Here we go, then. A re-smoke. Trying to keep them at bay. But when you're investing so much, you'd think there'd be a call made. There's... I mean, Still okay, so at this at point, you, you feel there has to be aggression over at the B bomb site to find the information. Either way, this B, this A bomb site is about to get crunched, and there's no one here to help these two defenders. This is going to be mad. Some long, some short, some bulk. This is going to be a uh, flooding, and I think they make, they're going to make the call sh surely soon. I mean, Zen is going to be the first to rotate. In fact, excuse me, it is innocent with the M4 on his way. And here we go. Tamsin starts as the dominoes start to fall. Leggy are down as well, and the remaining pieces are soon to be added to the pile. Surely, close range with those pistols. It's a prime breeding ground of fragging for the big boys. I don't know if they can come back in this. They have to get some kills and quick. They're at least here at the right moment. They can try and make something happen, try and give themselves an entry into the retake. First up is Tapson. That's an easy kill. Zen, he's next. Get a crouch slide as well, but now they have the hard job to do. Gobby showed his head there towards uh, graveyard and he will just can't try and play that time game they don't have kits and innocent just please keep that m4 his teammates will be begging him as they go on a scavenger mission for themselves big are gonna get i think three smgs out of this one unless keeve is uh penta was so uncomfortable in that round for some reason i'm not sure why but if you're gonna cheat a third player over when you know your opponents can only really have pistols and a ump is the best thing they can have and you have m4s th there's no real reason to make that cheat I i'm not quite sure why they did it they didn't have information no one at b was feeling pressure they weren't going for information and, and that's the thing, if you're going to cheat, it's one thing, but at some point, if you don't hear anything at that bomb site, you have to do a pop flash and a peek down banana. You right, have to get the something. information that someone's there or someone's not there because you cannot leave the A defenders that alone, that deep into the bomb site. There was no one even playing in mid. So, I mean, they just have, there's so much map that you just give up to big at that point. What's Penta's money like? This is it's uh, pretty low well, considering they've, they've invested in this, yeah. How odd. They want to try and play around Innocence M4. They feel like they've got some rounds to work with and... Let's have a little looky-loo as how far this one does come down. Perhaps they're trying to have the element of surprise. Notice the only person they've shown so far is the unarmored P2K of Crystal. Trying to perhaps get big, a little overconfident, a bit too perhaps big for their boots. We'll find out. We need to have a discussion about this team name. <laughs> it's a problem, isn't it? We really need to talk to them. <laughs> it's the uh, Berlin International Gaming, I think. All right, we'll start calling them that yep. instead. Every time. Yep. Berlin International Gaming get the 16th round. <laughs> Cool name, cool logo, I'll give it to them. Let's go, though. Apps very vulnerable to, to these wall bangs. It's like thin paper walls, they have them. One down already. They're going to start working out that there is some Kevlar present. HS down. And it does seem like they're n in no rush here, Big. Despite, you know, they're throwing as many nades as they can, investing in towards this. They're taking their sweet time, and it's being rewarded. Very blind Crystal does manage to do some considerable damage, because given his weaponry, but that could very well be it. Innocent's the only one fully packed up to the nines, and he does take some with him. In fact, this, is not, that's, is, this has become painful, at least economically, for Big. Yeah, but they're going to be fine with it. I mean, this is a big investment for Penta into this round. They're going to know that, so next round it's going to be a little bit light in terms of what they can buy. This could be cheeky, though. Tapson's ready for it. He shuts down Zen, trying to make a play through the smoke. Big making the comebacks that we've known them for throughout this tournament. It's going to be 8 to 10. A little bit, con I, I mean, small, I guess it's a small detail. They obviously had a shotgun close up. They wanted to kind of initiate contact. Same with the... Was that HS? Was uh, that, that was Sunny stairs? with shotgun, okay. and then I think there was another player at the stairs. I think that was yeah, HS, that was HS with, HS, with okay. the 5.7. But you have, you have an M4, right? Make, make, we saw when, when Big was saving, at least Legia, we don't, we don't necessarily like the play he made, but with the op, with one of the sole rifles, he's the one trying to initiate the action, trying to make something happen. I almost feel like that's, that's how you want the M4 to work as well. Hmm. Either way, I mean, just great utility usage from Big to make that shotgun feel uncomfortable. Penta's buy there is... Uh, aggressive. Very aggressive. They almost want to get this game over with. They want this win now. They don't want to see that third map mirage. 
Still, this is, should be a neat and tidy round. If Big want to forge a comeback, as they, as they already have begun, he's making this as uncostly as possible. Pressure mounting. Like, you know, he's getting pushed, and that's nice and efficient. They just want to keep all those five hearts beating on the T side and having a little swap of rumors. Tapson's going to go hunting, given his uh, favorable health. And there you go. That's a kappa. <laughs> hey, you've got full health. You push them. Boop. One bullet over five seven ruins that story. Zen can be careful here though. He, he doesn't have to chase anything. He's got a hundred armor. This is gonna be an easy upgrade for him. Three fifty for the full kit. <laughs> Don't know why I find that so comical. <laughs> what that he just got? No, just like, like, is like, oh, you, you go, you yeah. go, man, you go. Try the guns. Yeah, off you go. See you later, mate. I'll take your AK. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> ah, nine ten. Okay. Yeah, and Crystal's gonna have an AWP as well. He's sitting on six k. That's quite nice. Yeah, he had a nine six half, and so. They've started as they mean to go on here, big Ooh, on that he T side. He chose not to go for the AWP. Stabilizing somewhat, perhaps. Taps him, uh, we, we commented it took him a while to get into that cash game, but he's had a he's had a very good start here. 16 and 12 for him. Something crazy, like his first three maps of the tournament, he got to 100 kills. Yeah, absurd. In fact, oh, I thought it was in the last game he played, yeah. First three maps, 100 kills. Wow. Not a bad day in the office. I mean, it helps when you have a triple overtime. Yeah, that's a good point. Those Listen, those, those details, we don't need to discuss them. <laughs> 45 or whatever it was. Still, let's go. Talking of Tapson, we find him in apps. And there is no early aggression from the CTs. You can notice how they are kind of foregoing that upper middle hole. You've got a, done this duo of Crystal and HS. They find themselves, you know, on balcony together, pit together. And Sunny now has been given the... Uh, responsibility of clearing that close with those brackets. Again, though, very deep on the defense towards the A-bomb site, so not a lot of information. They're hearing taps and spam and everything, so they know there's some presence here. Sonny is out of nades as well over towards Rap. He's the most aggressive up towards mid. He's going to get in some action here. Gobby forces him back. Damage is traded, but no one falls. He's got to be careful, though. If he slinks too far back in a CT spawn, he can get isolated very, very quickly. Why are these Ts starting to commit? You can see that HS has got a perfect flash for short. He's going to try and get some information, and there's no one there to receive it just yet. But the reality is there are still two CTs positioned on B. Sunny makes this a whole lot better for them. Tapson down, one of their best braggers dead, but here comes Legia just strafing out into the clutches of HS. You're going to put it into slow motion as a smile crept onto the Estonian's face. That's it. That's the <laughs> round. I was so worried for a second because with 25 seconds left, one player at B almost pulled the whole defense. You could see him starting yeah. to run, but I mean, Big had to do the same thing in halls. Those footsteps give it away, and HS turns around just at the right moment for two kills. Big save on the round for him. Penta's got their 11th, and now they've got the money on the T side down pretty low. I'm intrigued to know where this T side AWP is going. Something a lot of people talk about, you know, the it's Inferno, so Inferno T side AWP, it's just, it's, it sometimes feels like a wasted investment. It can, there's so few angles that you can really make work. You want to get naded to hell and banana? You want to just sit there and stare at that view that Kiva's currently looking at? For 20, 30 oh, seconds. Taps and you poor, poor man. Yeah, that's a that's a tough fate, and that is the uh, cruel reality of pushing banana early. Yeah, we talked about that on the first time with HS. Either way, they have four bodies here. They have no map control elsewhere. I think they just are going to hit this. Key first in. I mean, I can understand it. And what I like that now teams are doing is they're doing this. They're sending someone up right as close as they possibly can. Then you smoke. Then the flashes come in, and that happens. Tapson takes down one. He pays the price from the nades of Zen earlier on. But now there's just a flood of them, and they will overwhelm them. Close quarters up does bring this into a level playing field and does make this winnable for both sides. It's going to be Sunny, the determining factor here. Again, another situation where a nade is brought out just as the execute comes in. The timing on these nades in this game has been unreal. These players have to start getting frustrated. Kiev gets, he has to smoke himself out because of a Molotov, and the retake is on here. Sonny's gonna be s just strolling. He knows where Kiev is. That smoke has just been a big, what, big bright flag saying, come and get me. But like, yeah, gonna be bo bodyguarding him perfectly. A quick dispatch of Sonny means that he's gonna strafe out from the molly. No, two to two. Gobby's in prime position to stop that defuse, and Kiev's doing perfect work now, just playing the time. That's a Molotov you really can't beat, Crystal. He does have a smoke grenade, but he has to find his frag fast. Now, considering that smoke grenade, pushing forward into the crosshair of Gobby. Time was not available for him. He just had to accept his fate and do as much damage as possible. 
And it brings it into a 10-11 stead. Yeah, big, huge win there. And they've inched a little bit closer. So now they're going to get some AK-47s on the board. I think I think Benz is going to buy here. They have just enough money to make it work with some UMPs. Okay. Yeah, they, they have to try and stay into this one. They had too much money to kind of give up this buy. They have three kits as well. They have great utility. But despite having three UMPs, they're still in it. I like, I just love the, the way the executes have, what, what the executes have become now, where it is just, if you if you know they're playing passive in sight, people do just walk along that wall. I mean, th this is this is why you see teams of the professional uh, d uh, divisions being a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more active, yeah. especially on Banana early on. Is it, I mean, Penta's giving up a lot of room for big to work with. play passive almost. Yeah, because you have no idea what's coming, especially on a map like Inferno, where the rotations, the timing of your rotation is so important to if you can win or have an effective CT half, you need to have information. Yeah, the Pro League teams do show a little more face in one way or another. And one of these guys is going to be battling for that Pro League spot a little later on. But now it's the Grand Finals, baby, and Big need to get this to a third if they want a chance at taking home that trophy. Is this? HS oh, God. took his time. He was so patient with it, and he had the rifle, the only one for the CT side, but he's finally had it taken away from him. Now, keep it next. Sure, they're low. And the recovered AK does make things a little sweeter for Innocent as he retreats for the save. Oh, Keeve, perfect timing on that one. He's going to ruin Innocent's round. But Zen's got everything he needs. Oh, well, he's going to go try and get that AK-47. Well, that might be might be costing him his life here as they do spot him out. He can't even go for that kill. There's two more up mid now backing up God B. They know he's gone towards Banana. No, they don't. He's blind anyways. This is so intense. Oh, man. They're all coming for him. They want his blood. No, he gets theirs. Whoa, that's costly. I think bigger fine though. They'll yeah, be happy no, with that. They've, they've now forced Penta onto a save, so they don't care about the economic damage there. They have plenty of rounds to build that back up, and it's no longer a comeback, Alex. It's tied 11 to 11. Make a wish. 9 6 half. 9 6 to 11 11. This has been great. On the attacking side of all from Big, they just seem to have a good firm grasp of what they want to be doing with these rounds, and it is going to be a little bit of an, I would assume, a nade stack. You've got two HEs, just try and show something down mid. Crystal is on his way. Max is probably going to be so confused by that smoke. He's going to watch it. We're just staring at it. Okay, so the nades go through the smoke. That's nice. Hides the nade stack, but doesn't distract him for long enough. There goes Keeve. Four on four. Max is down to 65, and look how much more passive this aggression from Penta in this round has made big. Two players all the way back towards T-spawn. Probably because there's just a whole lot of question marks right now in their yeah. comms. Like, where are they now? Yeah, I mean, they're not pushing anywhere, but they know that it could, could be coming from Banana. That's exactly what's happening. Innocent's actually got an AK-47. This could get interesting. Don't say that. A lot of big fans are going to be feeling the pain if this round does go their way. So patient, though. Still 60 seconds, and they've barely left spawn. Oh, you hate to see that. Innocent flushed out, but you can see that Sunny's going to try and keep the eyes on him. The UMP frag will fill the kill, kill feed. It's going to be HS's name beside it. So smart from Big. Still on top of things. Still very, very focused. One Molotov ruins that entire stack. It's on the AK-47 as well. If it's on the pistol, that might be able to go a little bit better. Oh, nice shot from Zen. Just no HP to take the secondary fight. Oh, it's left for HS. Go gather up an AK-47. Run a T-spawn. Save it for the next round. I feel like I've said that so many times. How many times have we used the word save? I mean, we need to start thinking about the words given this game. It's just been back and forth. He's going to go for this. He doesn't really have the kit time. Time without a kit is what, what my mouth was trying to say. But he's going for something here. That might be enough of a warning shot from Tabson. Yeah, I think now you save. You you, you go, it was, it was a nice idea. You prod for initial action, see if you can get a quick kill. And then you at least have a one on one. Still pretty pretty decent amount of time left in that bomb timer, even without the kit, to, to try and find it. It was unlikely, but with the losing bonus building up the way it was, I think he just felt like he had enough money to buy in this round anyways. Sure. Crystal doesn't, is the unfortunate part. Yeah, you know, an AK would have gone down real nice. We there. haven't seen an op on the CT side yet. So we saw it coming out for big. We even saw a double op set up, and it seems like Penta wants to stay away from that op. Interesting as well, given that, you know, Crystal more than competent with it. and. And we saw its influence when, you know, even you throw it into the hands of Legia as well. You have that double orb. We saw what that did for Big. That was kind of one of the things that got them back into some rounds on B. And you're right, it is odd. Not to see that pulled out. Not once. You're right. I don't think so. God damn. Well, both of these teams are feeling rather uncomfortable on their CT sides. Obviously, we already saw Big, so it wasn't, wasn't that pretty. But Penta as well, I mean, they just... Playing too passively, and, and because they're they're giving up so much to big, they, they've just been reset every time they win a round. It's, it's been two rounds where they won, and two are immediately followed up. One of them, admittedly, was the pistol round. What's Crystal's mindset behind that? Is that just a weird way to keep some, like, watch the angle? 
Yeah, it could be that he's just trying to jump, uh, like change his position. So if someone tries to pre-fire the corner with an yeah. off or something okay. like that, I like that. Just enough and enough of a pixel peak just to get the bodies crossing. I haven't seen that before. Smoke's about to clear and Crystal's in the cubby. Now he's not. Molotov comes out. Yeah. Big made that decision for him. <laughs> yeah, you're not going <laughs> right. there actually, man. I know you're thinking about it. It's not happening. It's interesting they threw while the smoke is still up because, I mean, if you throw that Molotov and he's there, you can punish the escape. Either way, it doesn't happen. Pressure being put onto the A bomb but the hit is going to be over towards B. 30 seconds left on the clock. They're going to rotate back. Look, all he has to do is get one kill. Oh, he's... I think he ran into him. Flashes are coming out and everything, and Legia is lost. HS2 throws off the warning shots, and Legia is still breathing despite kind of backing his backside into HS. And now Zen, innocent, ready and waiting to hold this one off, as is Crystal 2, Swift frags as he tries to pull Penta to 12. They don't really have the time, and the position's bad. It's going to be the bomb down, and so are the bodies. Zen, huge work from him and Crystal. Two men coming together in a beautiful symbiotic defensive relationship. <laughs> I was wondering how you were going to close that up. It's all Crystal. The early rotate over. Two kills through the smoke as well. Some of that luck. A little bit of it on their side. And that's that's the broken economy now for Big. They're on to just pistols. They've had so much money this whole time. Yeah, well. One round. You have to lose one. That's all it takes. They've been keeping them honest, Pen to have. That's sh that's for sure. Well, now we see the offer. Ooh, hello, nice. information. Yep, that's beautiful. You just got a face full of it for free. It's quite nice. Face full of information. I need to think about my phrasing. No, I liked it. You liked it? Yeah. It was mm -hmm. good. Okay. Thanks, man. Uh oh. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> the Molotovs in apps have been a bit of a recurring theme, but I like that he's going to ch chase that up with the he's smoke. He's just done with it. Yeah, I'm getting out of there. No, <laughs> thank you. I mean, you see five people second mid, then you see three people apps. You're like, I don't need to be on this balcony. Yeah, but again, I mean, I, ju I just hate how, how passive they're forced to be at this bomb site. Especially because, I mean, Crystal with the AWP. Obviously, switching positions with a rifle to get into the bomb site. That's smart, but still, if they explode here, he's either isolated or he's just out in the open. Throwing these smokes so early as well, the CTs are going to start running out of resources. They do have the Molotovs, though, and that will be very helpful. Here we go, Crystal. This is so tough. Multiple frags to pick up and just an AWP, but HS is there. Perfect hold from the two of them. Look at that three. And now problems start to arise from Legia. There's just so many different locations he has to peek in already. That's one. That's a start, but the nade's going to make life even scarier for him. 36 points of health as Chris tries to gather some information. Still paranoid of Sunny's positioning, and he didn't move a muscle. Unflinching as they find 13. HS loses his life, but I mean, he probably wins that round. So if, uh, well, maybe not wins well, it, but uh, Crystal dies there, gives up the AWP, gives up the positioning as well. That, that gets dicey. And suddenly they're on B. Yeah, huge play, long range. Crystal is thanking his stars. AK is out now for big. Penta once again grabs the lead. It is just exchanging back and forth down the stretch here. Did you do that intentionally? That was so clever. What's that? Thanking his stars because HS is the star of the team. No, I didn't. That was it. amazing. I mean, I'm just naturally. That was phenomenal. Downs. Love that. Oh, nade damage. That's, yep. uh, that's big. God. <laughs> 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 it is big. You're right. It is big that took those in aid damage. It's massive. Some would describe I it as Jason. I hate that. Ugh, funny. I love it. It's probably the least favorite <laughs> team name for him to ever cast. As he's suddenly realizing how uh, <laughs> how grandiose his vocab can be. Okay, Tabson. There we go. Zen down. He managed to do something despite his health now sitting at a rather redundant nine points of health. Here he comes, strafing into the site. Innocent MP9 will make short work of him, but will he get at much else? Yes, is the answer. Crystals Molotov makes life a lot easier for them. As you can see, look at God B cowering in the corner, covered in flames. Crystal unable to connect the shot through the fountain. The bulletproof concrete makes life a lot easier for him. But this is some aggression from HS, and he's going to catch God B doing the dance. Look at this spectacular. Three kills in the previous round, now two. From the Estonian, Nate could be perfect. Not quite. HS just about evades it. Nate was actually for the diffuser, and he's going to find this. He can stop this if he goes around the corner quick enough. He's not going to. Sonny does find him. I think Sonny on the flank was telling him he's pushing through the smoke. He's pushing through the smoke, and that's why they get off it. That nade could have been really, really cool, though, because that was for the diffuser. Landed right on Crystal. He moved out of the way just in time, though. Imagine if HS had taken it upon him to diffuse. It's that Molotov. It's uh, it's this one that's coming yeah, in right through here. It. There we go. That was from that was a CT retaking. So that's that crystal. That's crystal. beautiful. Yeah, that's that's perfect.
I mean, you know, so this is that's the second time we've seen Crystal not single handedly, but certainly a big on the part. B rotate, yeah. Yeah, on the B rotate, he got two with the M4 last time because of the absence of a T smoke. Then they have it. No worries. Molotov to pool and another round on the board for Penta. They have impressed me. This this team has genuinely, you know, impressed me throughout this event. A lot of people did not have them pinned to be the team in the grand finals. Uh, big was certainly a name in that conversation, as was God sent and you know perhaps a North American or Australian curveball, but Penta have just been you know, incredibly consistent. I thought they were the best looking team from yesterday. If yeah, I'm you honest. were hyped, yeah. weren't you? Yeah. I was excited, yeah. I forget who I was talking to. I, I, I mentioned to someone today, I'm just going to throw it out there. Start the day off. You someone did said say it. Who, was it you? No, you said it to me, I remember. That Penta's going to win. You did. It was Hugo in the green room. He said, who's going to take it? And you were Penta. quite with conviction as well. well. I probably just cursed it. Unless that's the Australian team yesterday. Sorry about that, Dark Sided. Dark sided, good lads. Nice to see them. They come are over. very nice guys, aren't they? Something about Australians, it seems. Yeah. Just nice human beings. Well it's the sunshine, I reckon, it gets to them. <laughs> There's always a couple bad eggs, right? Absolutely, there is, and there is always sometimes some game sound for as we dump straight into the 27th. Let's have a little look just exactly where their intentions lie, Big. You've got. A timeout. You've had time to think this one over. This is a limited economy buy. You can see they've got the utility that they want some form of execute, and an early kill would have been a dream scenario, but enough smokes from the CTs is going to keep them at bay. Yeah, look how much utility Penta just used to slow that hit down, though. They really did not want to deal with anything quick and early on in the round. Possibly because Crystal was close up with the AWP. He wanted a peek. This is big, though. Really, really positioning themselves. Posturing for a Pretty fast they hit, considering a lot of their rounds have been the clock run down to about 30 seconds. This is pretty early for them to get up. I'm very intrigued to see how this one's going to come down, because there isn't too much, you know, finesse to it. It is wait for them to use some nades and then walk up middle, and it's so far they are in a position to wrap. It's going to be Crystal, though, such a prime orping spot. He does manage to get a couple doing the flashbang dance, but here he goes. One nice crouches to evade the fire, but he will get traded eventually. The molly from Leggy is going to catch Sunny towards Pit, and only one more remains. It's HS. What can you do? It's incredible, too. Keeps this, ga this game and rather this round competitive, and so much so that Innocent's managed to make this now a Penta advantage. HS could have done enough. Yeah, well, he did. He dropped with the one kill. The first kill he had with the bomb. Zan's, wa or Zan's watching this. That's nicely done. Innocent closes it out. Two kills for him, but HS is the one who really mans up the defense nicely. Oh, that's gonna hurt. This one right here. That's the bomb, and the fact that Tapson has to go so far to pick it up just delays everything. It is grand final point for Mount or for Penta Sports. I almost said Mountain Dew. Uh, it is the Mountain Dew it finals. It is the gr the Mountain Dew League. Mountain Dew League. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. The Mountain Dew League Global Finals, and it is that point. Penta looking for the 16th, and I mean, you can see the limited economy from Big. It is just so hampered, so softened, and indeed, so is HS. It's called a nade. This could very well be it. People start to get scrappy. People start to get that, that additional sweaty palm. The crosshair isn't quite where it should be. And Big, this could be demoralizing. Not only are you losing the Grand Finals, but you're losing in two, unable to make an impact in the eventual scoreboard. But with what they've got, a couple of side arms, they want to get close with those to try and keep themselves in this game. Innocent gets some information. They're coming quick, though. No time to throw a Molotov. It's his teammates to do that. And already two bodies lining the battlefield. Tapson and next. Now Keeve, all forced to watch as Gobby and Legia have to do something to keep the German side afloat. It looks like it's only going to get worse. It's Innocent to throw the final nail into the coffin appropriately on coffins. Legia, what have you got? Four left. And you have to save the day for your team. Everyone else lies silent. 50 seconds, he does retrieve the AK. He does not have the bomb, and that's the primary issue here. That's the end of it. Crystal finishes it with none other than a Molotov and a very loud celebration as this mixed bag of nationalities are going to be your champions here. For the Mountain Dew League Global Finals, your champions are Penta Sports. What a journey. That was such a nicely played tournament from them. A great grand finals as well. Uh, I mean, they were just on point individual effort. The HS, extremely impressive. Sonny, great series out of him. But I mean, the team decisions, the way that they bounced back on the T side of Cobble, they adjusted so nicely. Here on Inferno as well, just came out really hitting hard. I mean, the amount of economic resets they had, we saw how many plants they had. Their, their entrances and the bomb site was so well done. Tough team to go against in the grand finals for big. I mean, we have teams who are present in E-League. We have players who have got major titles under their belt, players who have been to major event semifinals uh, at this very event, and it's Penta 
a bunch of misfits. It is another story of those misfits. Teams that couldn't quite find a spot in their regions. You know, Crystal couldn't make it work in Germany. We saw HS who couldn't kind of find anything going in Estonia. We have Innocent. The G2 project didn't work there back then. He was trying to make something happen in Poland. He wasn't never he was never going to make it work in VP. Yeah, find something here for Penta. It's yeah. a start. Yeah, it really is, and this is this is very good for them. Uh, obviously, great showing on land as well. Experience being added into it. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's that's the big takeaway is, is those stars for this team. HS, Sunny, those guys showed us that they can do it on land. And, and big, we have to remember, I mean, not the best performance they put out in the Grand Finals, but all through this event, they looked very, very strong. Yeah. Tabson had an incredible event. They were the only team that was able to slow him down. Um, that, that was that was nice. It was a step I in the right direction. It, yeah. I'm going to give that, that. I think that's going to be the, the overall summary is that this was a big, big test for a lot Are of people. Are they playing in the relegation as well? Yeah, they have to be. Penta. They're one of the top three teams from from, from Mountain Dew League online. So it's big and Penta. Yeah. Both are in, not only are they in the grand finals here, but I mean, I'll let you explain how that's going down because you're actually going to be doing that next week, right? Yeah. So um, the n I don't. Uh, big is playing Virtus Pro. Yes, that's going to be. I know they're, they're looking forward to that one. I'm trying to remember who the other team is. I don't think At it's the LDLC. The table. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who it is. is I it can't us? remember from Pro League. We'll do our research. Yeah. We'll find it out. We will find it out. But Penta's playing someone. Nice one. Thanks. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> that hard hitting analysis. There we there. are. We've got it. Penta is playing Hellraisers. Oh, he's done it. There it is. Smashed it. Celebrate. HR yeah. will be going up against them for. I mean, that's a spot in the pro league. Yeah, and that's doable spot as well. Like Hellraisers, like they, they had a good star ladder, but outside of that, they aren't like world beaters or anything no. like that. So that's that's very very doable. Um, the big thing is going to be taking this win, um, looking at some of the mistakes you made, but adding adding some things into the wheelhouse, right? Building on the playbook that you right. have. Um, a lot of a lot of their T sides seemed like they were very very just like heavy brute force tactics. They didn't seem like the, you know some of the more finesse that they, that they tried to do didn't yeah. really pan out, but. Um, yeah, I mean, when you have that much skill, obviously the trading was, was phenomenal. Yeah, I think there was, I mean, there's flaws in the, everyone's game that you, you see here. That's the reason yeah. why they're on, they're on the ladder and they're climbing. Mm -hmm. Sure, there are flaws, and it's just a question of ironing them out, as I probably should have with this shirt. You no, know, it looks good. Thanks, man. It looks but really ironing, ironing it out and, and, uh, and trying to, you know, f make something that's fundamentally sound. I know that, you know, there were some teams already that caught your eye that the fundamentals were down, and they, they were ma making less yeah, of those Dark mistakes. Yeah, Darkseid made some really cool decisions this tournament. I mean, that, they, they, they had a pretty good event, I think, overall. Um, I mean, all things considered, I guess, is the better way to put it. They didn't really go far, but, I mean, sure. what we saw looked good. Uh, almost beat Godsent. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we had a lot of, actually, it was, a, it was a very enjoyable experience for me, um, getting to see. Just down the road from home, quick train exactly. ride as well. Yeah, a quick yeah. train see ride. See the countryside, getting the old stomping grounds of Leicester. Getting to come to ESL UK, which is where my entire career began, nice. essentially. You know, uh, hanging out with these guys, the studio at nine times bigger, the staff nine times bigger than when I was here. Yeah. But it's, it's still here, and, and, and we got to see not only that, we got to see some players have their first ever LAN. We yeah. got to see some p players hi heavily accused, you know, the likes of uh, the big rig. He was heavily accused online, comes to off the offline environment, does exactly the same thing. Lots of lessons learned. And, and on the grand final, we learned that as well. Penta are, are not, I mean, that's a huge win for them just because of the, I mean, the organization battle as well. Penta versus big, I imagine that's quite yeah. a heated one. Yeah, it's, it's probably some, a little bit of bad blood perhaps there. Oh Either man. way, we do have an interview down on stage with your grand final winners of the Mountain Dew League. It's going to be Matt with Penta. Thank you, Moses and Machine. Thanks very much, guys. Innocent and Penta, you are our champions here at Amon and Julie Global Finals. How does that feel? Uh, this is insane. I actually didn't expect us to, to win the event because it was our first offline event, but we shown that even with uh, this pretty new lineup, uh, we can do a lot of damage on the scene, even offline. So it, we are all extremely happy. Congratulations. You should be extremely happy. It was a really good win as well. A 2-0 in the final at the end of a weekend where we've had so many games. Uh, overtimes as well. Triple overtime at the end of yesterday too. Um, a 2-0 final on this was kind of based on all of this weekend we've had. A bit of a surprise. Uh, maybe. I mean, we are. We just dominated the event. We didn't lose any map. So we basically won everything that we, that we, we played on this tournament. So I don't know. We are just happy and we are hoping for the good future in this in this lineup now of course the mountain dew league is the exclusive path to the pro league it's the only way you can get a spot in the esl pro league so godsend have got that from europe for the next season because they came top of the eu um and then big got the second seed and you were the third seed coming into this weekend's finals so do you feel like you've shown that uh, perhaps you should have finished the season higher than you did uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, we were struggling against uh, big in online games. I think we lost 
three games that we play against them. One, two best of threes and one best of one. So we, they were our kryptonite before this event, and now we, we proved that we can play offline, and we maybe are even better than online. So it's awesome feeling, and we are looking forward for the relegation matches. Yeah, I was going to say, what's going to be next? How are you going to prepare for the next thing? Uh, we actually don't have any time to prepare. It's like uh, we leave uh, UK tomorrow, and on Monday we already play relegation matches. And it's like three days of playing, and then instantly after we have uh, close minor qualifiers. And then after uh, we go to the offline tournament in Poland. So it's pretty tight schedule, and we don't have any time to rest. But uh, I guess our hard work pays off, and we are just happy. And going into all of that really busy season for you, where it all matters too, you couldn't be in a better place than where you are now. You're going into that as the champions of the Mountain Dew League. Congratulations then to Penta Sports, who are the champions of the Mountain Dew League Global Finals. Mountain Dew League Global Finals Champions, Penta Sports. Congratulations again to them. Thank you very much, Bok, for making his way onto the stage too to do our check presentation. Can he make it back up to the analyst desk to talk about that incredible final? I'm sure he can. Dan Gaskin and our guys back on the desk to talk about that amazing final which has brought this incredible CSGO weekend to a close. I mean, that final was a blast. I'm the fine. citrus variety. But, uh, Bok... How are you feeling? You, you just had a little jog, but oh, just a little nice of you to present the check. Of course, you the Mountain Dew League has kind of been your baby, hasn't it? Both of you guys, really. You've both been doing Europe yes. and North America. Do you think Penta are deserved champions here today? Yeah, you know, Penta came into this event underdogs the whole time. We never really looked at them as a serious threat. We are like, they'll definitely escape groups. What do they do from there? They were the most dominant team all weekend long. Two O's, two O's, like not really seeming to struggle against anyone. Consistent performances across the board. You got to tip your hat to them. I mean, they looked great as a team. And the other teams had their struggles. They just couldn't manage to close games out. A lot of close games that we didn't necessarily expect. And then focusing on uh, that game that we've just witnessed then on Inferno. I mean, it started off all right for Big. I thought that they got the pistol and I was thinking, OK, yeah, we're going to start to see like a, a three game series. And then instantly Penta replied uh, with the, the four spy. It was 1-1 and then they started just churning round after round. And then there was that, that Gobby round. I don't know if you saw it uh, on Inferno where he was just sitting up uh, out of apps on the balcony. Yeah, Actually, this one. Uh, yeah, and he throws the molly. The yeah. timing mm. is absolutely insane. I don't think that's a mistake. Like, I don't want to give Cob uh, Gobby too much grief there because that is just counter-strike yeah. in a nutshell. You just whip out one of those nades, and it happened a few times. It seemed, just didn't seem to go Big's way throughout this game. Yeah, I mean, that's just one of those things where... It's just the way the game works. You just got, you know, destroyed by timing. It's not a mistake. He's going to Molly to prevent a push. It's actually pretty good timing on the nade itself, but it just doesn't work out the way he has anticipated. And he, he's already got it primed and pulled. It's not like he can back off at that point. He's committed. So either he throws or he puts it away and goes back to the rifle. Either way, he's, he's in a position where those teammates are still going to die. So he throws down the Molly and takes the firefight. But in the end, you know, it's... That's the rounds we kept seeing for, for Penta, is rounds where Big had a decent setup, but it's just bad timing or, or whatever it may be. Bad positioning just seems to work out better for Penta than them. And Big certainly made a game of it. As we can see, they even took the lead at, at one point during the second half. Scorny, any players that really stood out for you in, in this series? I mean, on Penta, you have to give credit to Sunny. Uh, he has kind of been the tapson of this team in the sense that he's pretty consistent with his fragging. He generally has that, that, that high impact, but also HS in this last map. Uh, yesterday, we saw Zen kind of put a map on the board. We saw him come in when it really mattered most. But HS has been one of these more silent fraggers that every once in a while, he'll have a massive game. Um, the same way, say, like Twist can do or Disco Doppling can do for Godsend. Uh, the same way that, that sometimes you'll have Keeve going off with the AWP on Big. So HS kind of gets his map to really go home this weekend. Every single player has impact at some point throughout the weekend. And I think that it's really cool for HS that it finalizes himself on that last map of the series. Um, because as you know, 
uh, Machine and Moses had been talking about, he didn't find any success within Estonia. He comes from one of these countries that doesn't really have a scene, uh, or at least not one at a competitive level, to have a full team of Estonians. And this is kind of, in my opinion, like a phase op like a phase point five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, looking at this team in general, just looking at the experience, we have we have HS who had a brief stint with Rogue. Things weren't working out there. They made changes, and then they obviously found success before the org fell apart. We have Innocent coming from the Doberian gaming team that became Team King when got benched. That team just bombed out of Pro League. Um, you know, we have Zen and Sunny who are both from the Finnish scene, which is not known for dominant Counter-Strike teams. I mean, we had Ents and 3D Max for a little while where they had brief stints where they found success. And then we have Crystal who's been on this team for like Forever. almost four years. I feel like he's been on this team since like 2013 or something yep. like that. He's like he's the furniture now. Yeah, at this point he's, you know, he's affixed, he's welded, he's, his body has fused and become part of the machine that is Pentasports. So you have a team that's largely just kind of disregarded because you're like, oh, it's, you know, it's Finnish players, it's an Estonian player. But they show up at this event and they have the best performance of any team we had here. Yeah, an unbeaten team. Uh, it's been amazing. Let's have a last look at the bracket then and see how it all played out. Penta did take down Splice 2-0 to zero earlier on, and Big whipped Godsent out of the competition, which left us with this fantastic final. Unfortunately for Big, they weren't able to show up, and they did lose 2-0. to zero. They definitely gave it a good effort. I shouldn't say they didn't show up, because they did. There were players who played absolutely phenomenally. But where do these teams go from here, then? Because, of course, we have the ESL Pro League relegation matches. Both of these teams have qualified for that in second and third seed, respectively. Virtus Pro versus Big. Hellraisers versus Penta. I mean, let's talk Penta first. Going up against Hellraisers off the back of this, do you think they've got a chance of making Pro League? That's an org rematch. Season 21 was the first time we ever did a Premier Land. I've already talked about it a few times. It was in this studio, and it was Hellraisers, but back then it was a different roster. Oscar was on the team, and it was Penta with a uh, mostly German squad. We had a few other players that I think Mike S and Lowell were on the team at the time. Uh, Tabson was playing, it was Crystal and I forget who the last member of that roster was. And no one thought that Penta would even make it there. They actually beat Ents to get to that final game and then lost to HR. And I remember how defeated they looked at the time because at that point in time, that was their road to Pro League, was winning that game and they lost. So if you're Penta, you got your head held high right now. You're like, okay, we beat down a team that put, beat us out of the playoffs and a chance at an automatic Pro League spot. Are we going to feel pretty confident coming into a team that we've seen play plenty of times? There's so much footage to rehearse on that team. I feel like Penta has a leg up now like they've got this under their belt, they come into that game with a little bit more confidence. You agree with that? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I think they certainly do stand a chance, although I don't want to underestimate Hellraisers because they have had really good form as of late. So I think that it's definitely going to be a hard game for Penta, uh, but none of these matches this weekend should have been easy anyways, and they, they pretty much dispatched of all their opponents with relative ease, right? They don't give up a single map. Uh, there's some that kind of get close. We even on Inferno at the end there, we start to see Big look like they could squeak it at least maybe to an overtime or something along those lines. Um, and then Penta just kind of bounce back and close things down. So they definitely have the resistance resilience to do it and I'd like to think that they have like just the skill as well um, I wish them the best of luck when it does come to that match because that is what is next for them that is what's important certainly gonna be exciting to see where Penta go well thank you very much gentlemen for joining me uh, over the desk over the course of the weekend and of course thank you everyone at home for joining us for the Mountain Dew League global finals it's been an absolutely fantastic event Penta Sports are your winners they will win eighteen thousand dollars but from myself these guys, the rest of the talent team, the whole of production, and of course, everyone from Mountain Dew as well. Have a lovely night. We'll see you next time.